Williams will be the deep man for North Carolina. 48 degrees as we kick it off. Light breezes, north northwest, and the humidity at 40 percent. A perfect day for college football as we play for the victory bell. North Carolina and Duke. Ratliff Williams will watch it bounce in the end zone. There will be no return. Here are the food line impact players, and we'll start with North Carolina. Well, he'll affect the game in so many ways. Michael Carter, you see, averaging almost seven yards a carry, but he's also a valid receiver. He's a guy that'd like to get the ball in space. He creates major problems because he's got great speed. Defensively, one of those guys that will be shadowing Michael Carter is Ben Humphreys, big-time linebacker. The senior been here and played in a ton of games. Missing his running mate at linebacker in Joe Giles Harris will have to try to fill in with a multitude of linebackers. Well, Joe Giles Harris, 81 tackles to lead the team this season. North Carolina goes to the ground with Michael Carter. Near first down yardage as he blasts past the 35-yard line. And the sticks are going to move. McDuffie had to make the tackle, and he got 11. Well, immediately, our food line impact player, Michael Carter, affects the game. His ability to get out on the edge. They love Carter in space. Has great speed. See Nathan Elliott's yards per game, seventh in the ACC. They'll need a good Nathan Elliott today. Lefty throws, that one batted down. Ben Humphreys got up to get a piece of that one incomplete. There's a flag on the play. Offside, defense number 51, line of the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. Take a look at Ben Humphreys. He'll affect the game in a lot of ways as well. His ability to get out in space, knock the ball down. Did a nice job of reading the eyes of the quarterback. Elevates and bats the ball down, but his efforts go for not as big this flag for offside on first down. Two-time academic all-conference performer for Duke, Ben Humphreys, the senior from Newport Beach, California. First and five for North Carolina from the shotgun. They run it with Carter. He might be very close to another first down beyond that 45-yard line. They got about four or five on the play as Trayvon McSwain made the tackle for Duke. A good hard running by Carter. 5'9", only 195 pounds, but runs with some power between the tackles. He's not just a space guy. He'll run it right at you. It'll be second in inches. North Carolina with its 1-7 and seven record, 1-5 and five in conference play. They go around the edge with Antonio Williams. Duke's side of the field, inside the 45. A first down and more as Tangelo made the tackle after a 12-yard gain. Well, good to see Antonio Williams on the field for North Carolina. One of the guy, one of the many guys for both these teams that's banged up, but he's done an outstanding job since transferring from Ohio State. Carried the ball 85 times. He's averaging almost six yards a carry himself. So North Carolina, albeit their record, one and seven, is they've got some playmakers offensively. Carter took that direct snap. He went to the right side near the 40-yard line and got three. Take some talent now at the center position. you got to remember who you're snapping the ball to. This is a direct snap to Carter, who's kind of side card left of Nathan Elliott there. Nice job by Jonathan Troll playing center to get the ball to the right guy. Yeah, he's in for the injured J.J. McCargo at that center position for North Carolina. This pass is complete near the 30-yard line. It's Vargas who put the shoulder pads down and got nine. A lot of different looks from Chris Kabilovic, the offensive coordinator here. Just a play fake, get Vargas the, the ball in the flat. Quick, easy throw for Nathan Elliott. And another really good first down play. Sixth catch of the season for Vargas down to the 30-yard line and a first down for North Carolina moving the ball effectively early stages of the first quarter. Nathan Elliott, the junior from Salina, Texas. This is Carter now, right side. He's got some room, turns the corner. First down inside the 20 and near the 15. Forced off by Marquise Waters. 16 yards, Michael Carter. A lot of different looks. Here's just a quick option. Watch Vargas, 80, get the block out in front for Michael Carter, and then the great speed to turn the corner and push it inside the red zone. Here is our red zone, brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. The numbers for North Carolina this season in the red zone. They're going to try the left side. Turn the corner to the end zone. Anthony Ratliff Williams and a touchdown for the Heels on their first possession. Well, Anthony Ratliff Williams steps in at the quarterback spot. A little triangle look in the backfield. A little ride fake there. And now you got two blockers out in front. Did an excellent job. We talked about Ratliff Williams off the, off the top. He affects the game so many ways. He doesn't just catch the ball. He returns kicks, but he also runs it extremely well. 
And Ratliff Williams, one of those opportunities to get him the football. First rushing touchdown of the season. He went 13 yards for the TD. Freeman Jones adds the extra point. 7-0 Tar Heels. For the Blue Devils against the North Carolina Tar Heels. The 105th all-time meeting in this rivalry. And North Carolina striking first with a drive that never saw a third down as they ran it right into the end zone with Anthony Ratliff-Williams. Well, the key to moving the football against Duke is you've got to get Ben Humphreys blocked. He's one of their leading tacklers. 37, 34, Ben Humphreys. Here's the throw to Vargas. Get him blocked in the middle. Nice block there. And then trying to pursue the run game against Ratliff-Williams. Another key block, that time by Jordan Brown. And Ratliff-Williams waltzes into the end zone. So that'll be a key, and that certainly was a focal point on that part of that drive was to get Ben Humphreys blocked. They did a nice job in the back end of that drive. They're just scoring drive, seven plays, 75 yards, and did not face, as you heard from Tom, a third down in the drive. Carter had four rushes for 36 yards during the course of that drive as North Carolina has scored first, and penalty markers are out as Tyler Powell creates Offside. contact. Defense, number 95, making contact with offensive linemen. Five-yard penalty, first down. Jeff McGonaghy with the call, and here's the food line impact players. We start with Duke. There's a lot of playmakers, but down near the goal lane, Davis Copenhaver has been outstanding. Just 10 catches, but five for touchdowns. The guy affects it extremely at a high level, and Cole Holcomb, the leading tackler on this team, sideline to sideline, linebacker. 22 tackles last week against Georgia Tech for Holcomb. That pass up for grabs and incomplete. Jonathan Lloyd lost his helmet in the process, and it's incomplete. And a good play by Corey Bell, the senior. They've had a lot of injury at corner. Corey Bell, number 18, going to elevate, and he'd be the first guy to tell you should have picked it off, but a nice job to deflect the football. Well-thrown ball, or maybe a tad behind, but a good job of playing the football by Corey Bell. Daniel Jones, 6'5", 220, and a junior. Throws it over the middle. Complete big hit. Chris Taylor hangs on, and there's some post-whistle discussion after 13 yards. Well, what a nice catch by Chris Taylor. He knows he's going to take a shot at the back end of this little RPO. Get it out, and here comes Miles Dorn to drop the hammer. Taylor right back up in his face. Hey, it's rivalry week, man. I'm expecting it. Miles Dorn, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Vance High School. Ramming has the football. There is no game. Back to the line of scrimmage. Ran into Malik Carney, number 53 in Carolina Blue. Well, Daniel Jones has been through it this week, this, this year. Broke his collarbone. Was out for a couple of games, but uh, Duke didn't miss a beat. They had Quentin, Quentin Harris came in and played well. But this is one of the better passers and, and managers of the game. Guy does an outstanding job playing quarterback at Duke. 33rd career start for Daniel Jones. He'll keep the football and get five. Patrice Rene making the play for North Carolina. Daniel Jones from Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte Latin High School. Soft spoken, but not once they kick it off. A yeah. Different his, guy and a leader out there, Dave. His ability to run the ball is a little bit deceptive. He's not doesn't have great speed. He's a little gangly, but he steps out of a lot of tackles, and he did a good job there to keep it third and medium. Third and five, 39% on the season. In third down situations for Duke, that is 10th in the ACC. Jones looks the other way. Has the pass complete along the sideline. Chris Taylor, who broke away. Taylor is going to go to the end zone. Touchdown for Taylor and Duke of 52 yards. Yeah, one on one on the outside for Chris Taylor, and he does an outstanding job of coming back to the ball. Jones wasn't initially looking that way, but gets the ball to the outside, and then he runs through the tackle of Corey Bell, and then the great speed to shove it in the end zone for the answer by Duke. But when you're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, you must make that one-on-one -on -one tackle. Bell was not able to make it. Chris Taylor, a couple of big plays. Had a nice catch with Dorn dropping the hammer on him, and he makes a play on the back end of this drive. Second receiving touchdown for Chris Taylor. And the 14th TD pass of the season for Daniel Jones as he found Taylor, who did the rest. Well, North Carolina scores on their drive. Duke comes right back and says, hey, we're even, baby. It's 7-7. Slash truck giveaway. They've met every year since 1922. 
on this Veterans Day weekend. They renew the rivalry. Anthony Ratliff Williams tries to make a move with the 15 and is dropped just beyond there. 17 yards on the return for Ratliff Williams. Now time for our Carolina Ford dealers. Keys to the game with Dave Archer. Well, North Carolina's established a standard on their offensive side of the football, certainly, and they have not played to it. They have not made the plays that have been available. They said, hey, just play to the standard and we'll be fine. I thought they did that in their opening drive. And for Duke, we must overcome. They've got a ton of injuries. We talked about Joe Giles Harris, their leading tackler, out of the game. They've got a myriad of injuries across on both sides, and both teams really do. But they have to overcome the injuries and play to the level. They're six and three for a reason. They play well as a team. North Carolina in search of its first road victory of the season. The handoff to Carter, and he races past the 35-yard line, finally dragged down by Dylan Singleton, but Carter downshifting, and 19 yards later, he's got a first down. Yeah, that's North Carolina offensive lines did an excellent job up front. Got Ben Humphreys blocked again on that play as Humphreys is coming off the edge, and Carter right in behind the block for the big game. North Carolina averages 170 yards per game on the ground, ninth in the conference. They'll swing it out to Carter. He angles toward the marker and has yet another first down. Back-to-back -back plays, and their North Carolina offense in the first quarter, Dave, is humming along. Well, this is a 4-2-5 defense, and so what they're doing is they're finding Humphreys, the middle backer, and they're getting him blocked and are allowing their playmakers to get out on the edge. So, North Car uh, so Duke is going to have to rally and bring more people down in the box. Number 47, a flag is out. Long pass for Elliott. Knocked away near the 20, looking for Daz Newsom. Number nine, Jeremy McDuffie was back there, but there was a flag thrown immediately after the snap. Legal formation, offense. Five players in the backfield, the snap. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Let's take a look at this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Daz Newsome, big-time playmaker. Good coverage by McDuffie. Ball underthrown, poor throw by Elliott that time, and Newsom had no chance, but McDuffie was right in his hip pocket on the play. Newsom had his big game at the Carrier Dome, the double overtime loss on the road for North Carolina with a punt return touchdown in that game. A rushing TD as well. Antonio Williams at the 40 taken down, but that is three straight plays for first down yardage. 15 yards for Williams after the tackle by Singleton. There's nobody setting the edge out here. See, there's no edge out here for Duke defensively. And so it's just running downhill every time, whether it's Antonio Williams or whether it's Michael Carter, they've got a lot of room on the perimeter. Nobody's setting the edge defensively in the run game for Duke. Twice this season, Antonio Williams has gone over 100 yards rushing against Pittsburgh and Syracuse. This is Williams at the 40. Now this time, Tom, they get the safeties down. This is something they're going to need to do, and this is something North Carolina can force you to do if they run it well, is you're going to bring the safeties down in. Dylan Singleton has to come up on the safety from the safety position to come up and force the play. And Chris Kapilovic, the offensive coordinator right there, is going to get some opportunities to throw the ball down the field if he can pull some of these defenders out of the middle of the field. Carter. Carter inside the 20. Looking for the front end of the end zone, and Carter hits the pylon and scores. Michael Carter on the rush for North Carolina, and 40 yards later, he's got a score. Well, once again, excellent job of blocking the front little trap. Carter right in behind it, and no one home. Waters has to rally to try to get a hand on Carter, but the great speed, we talked about Michael Carter off the top. Our food line impact player, if he gets out in space, he is a home run threat. He's got six rushes and 95 yards on the first two possessions for North Carolina. Carter diving for that pylon, front left corner of the end zone. As he came around the left side, and Ford Carter, if it's stand, it's gonna, gonna be his second TD rush of the season. Let's take a look at the left foot. Left foot looks like, looks like they can see green between the left foot, and he hits, definitely hits the pylon, so it's the left foot right around the two yard line that they're taking a look at. Let's see if we can see green. Yeah, there's green between his shoe, white shoe. Here's Green in between the white shoe and the sideline. That's a touchdown. What a play by Carter to stay in bounds if, in fact, the play stands. 
Again, it is under review. You must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which on the field is touchdown. Yeah, and I made the call pretty quickly there, Tom, so I'm not sure where we're spending so much time on it. I think they could have come to me immediately and uh, saw that Michael Carter certainly got in. I would not disagree with that assessment, Dave, but we are still in an official review. And for more on Michael Carter, who may have a touchdown, we go down to Larisha. Yeah, guys, so when I was talking to Michael Carter, he was telling me that he was really shocked to know that just as a sophomore, he has established himself as a leader. That's what head coach Sarah Fedora even told us as well when we spoke to him on the phone this week. But Carter told me that he's still evolving in his leadership role, and he wants to do more. He told me he's trying to recreate a culture and reaffirm that hard-nosed, smart, fast, physical brand that was already established. And the call has been confirmed. So Michael Carter has the rushing touchdown, his second of the season. Well, and we, and we didn't need to spend that much time on it. I did it for him before they, uh, <laughs> not sure they spent so much time on it. Next time, Dave, will send you over to that review <laughs> booth to add your two cents. No, not an easy job. They're, they're battling, trying Absolutely. to get it right. want to make no sure, yeah, they're in conjunction with the command center in Greensboro, North Carolina, just to make sure we get the call correct. And there was evidence to support the call on the field and North Carolina. The extra point has a 14 7. A big weekend between North Carolina and Duke. We've had three series. We have number on the team just down the road. North Carolina has won 23 of the last 28 meetings between the teams. Deion Jackson, bit of a misplay at the 11, finally scooped it up and makes his way up past the 20 yard line. 14 7 North Carolina, and we are going back to Charlotte. This studio update is presented by Hardy's Try an All-Star Meal. The game winner on Thursday night, Coach B. Uh, Wake Forest tight end Jack Frudenthal only had one catch on the day, and this was it. 32-yard touchdown catch from Jamie Newman. Wake Forest with the 27-23 win over number 14 NC State. Guys, back to you. Yeah, really a surprise win for Wake Forest. Not a surprise to Dave Clawson. North Carolina State went for it on fourth down, didn't get it, provided the opportunity for Wake, and they won the football game. Incomplete pass. Hello, Jamie Newman. First start of his career, Dave, in the 112th meeting between Wake and NC State, and they win it 27-23. We will see North Carolina State next week as they travel to Louisville, which lost in the Dome against Syracuse last night. Syracuse has been undefeated in the Carrier Dome this season. Yeah, you know Baber's team playing at a high level. Notre Dame next week. Deion Jackson, three. Not quite as easy sledding. Now, we had the play by Chris Taylor where he caught it, spun out of the tackle, and scored. But you take it with the plays, there's three for three. I talked about three touchdowns and three possessions. But North Carolina making it a little tougher on Duke than Duke is on North Carolina. So a big third and seven situation here for Jones to try to answer North Carolina's consecutive touchdown drives. Duke with its six and three record. Jones lets it go over the middle cut. Jonathan Lloyd on the run near the 40. Lloyd tackled by Cole Holcomb, but he takes it into North Carolina territory to the 40-yard line. Yeah, excellent route. You see inside technique by the corner, so Lloyd's job on that in route is I've got to get to the inside shoulder of the corner for my quarterback. They tried to heat Jones up with pressure, came with a six-man pressure, played man coverage in the back end. Excellent route by Lloyd and a well-thrown ball by Daniel Jones. 34 yards on the catch and run by Lloyd. This is Deion Jackson inside the 30 and another first down for Duke as they are moving the football just as well as North Carolina. And for more on Lloyd, down to Larisha. Well, when I spoke with Jonathan Lloyd, he told me that he would like to describe himself as a selfless player. He said he doesn't always get the ball, which he doesn't mind that. But when he does, he tries to find a way to impact, it, impact the team, whether it's blocking or running the routes to clear the ways for other guys. Well, 46 games for Jonathan Lowe. We talk about he and Ram and their veteran guys that have contributed in so many different ways. Jones keeps it, goes over the middle, open man into the end zone, and a touchdown. Number 80 is Daniel Helm, and Duke is an extra point away from tying this game. Now a little RPO fake, and 
Duke has rallied back to answer. The tight ends on this football team, Tom, it's unbelievable. It came in with, 30, with uh, 22 touchdown passes, and seven had gone to the tight ends. This is Helm's second touchdown. Little RPO fake, drew the defenders up, and then in behind goes Helm, the tight end. Excellent throw by Jones to put it on his big tight end, and he coasts into the end zone. Second TD catch of the season for Daniel Helm, the senior from Chatham, Illinois. And thanks to Colin Wareham, we are tied 14 all with 620 to go in the first quarter. And we'll be back after this word from North. All tied at 14, Daniel Helm making the catch. 26 yards on the play for Duke. Going to get motion right here and fade to Jet Sweep. This is the guy I want you to pay attention to. That's who Daniel Jones is looking at. Play fake on the jet sweep. Safety steps inside. Helm steps right by him. And Jones puts the ball on him. That's all he was looking for is the safety's reaction to the play fake in the run game. Anthony Ratliff Williams will be the return man. Five plays, 77 yards in just a minute and 50 seconds with a scoring drive for Duke to tie it at 14. Anthony Ratliff Williams meets it and takes it up past the 25 and just short of the 30-yard line, the return of 23 yards. Time for Know Your Score, brought to you by Lending Tree. We go around the ACC with two games complete on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, big upset by Wake Forest. Obviously, the Qs takes care of business. They've got Notre Dame next week in Yankee Stadium, and there's what you've got coming up. Miami, Georgia Tech this evening. Notre Dame hosts Florida State, and, of course, the big one. Clemson travels to Chestnut Hill to take on A.J. Dillon and Boston College. That is the battle for the top spot in the Atlantic Division. We saw Boston College last week go on the road and defeat Virginia Tech. Antonio Williams roadblock. And Duke Blue, only a yard. McSwain in there for Duke. Well, this has been, a, I mean, we've got guys, we've got a number of people tabulating numbers in the truck right now, but that's what you've got so far. Both offenses operating at a high level, and neither defense really stressing the other team's offense. Somebody defensively has got to make a play for one of these teams. Get out the abacus today. We're racking up the yardage just beyond the 30. And Ben Humphreys made the tackle of Michael Carter. Well, we talk about impact players on the defensive side of the ball. This is one. They've done an outstanding job, a job of blocking Ben Humphreys today, but not on that play. And they finally forced North Carolina into a conversion situation. And the Duke fans here know it. First chance on third down in the game for North Carolina. Elliott had the time in the pocket. Off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Rontavius Groves. Incomplete and fourth down for North Carolina. Yeah, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Little pressure on the quarterback. Forced Elliott to get the ball out a little bit sooner than he wanted to. And could not complete it. And finally, Tom, finally, one of these defenses made a play. First time we've had a stop on defense in this first quarter. Back and forth with touchdowns on four straight possessions prior to his three and out for North Carolina. Hunter lent to punt. DJ Ramming wants a fair catch and he's got it. About the 33 yard line. 36 yards on the punt by Lent. We talked one of the guys that's been a big impact guy for David Cutcliffe over the last four years is T.J. Ramming. Ramming's been phenomenal. You look at the numbers, the career reception leaders, he's number three all-time, two, two of the greatest of all time. Obviously, Connor Vernon, Jamison Crowder, who plays in the National Football League for the Redskins. But Ramming is not the biggest guy in the world. He's not necessarily the fastest guy in the world. All he does is continue to make plays. And, Tom, he talked about it off the top. He has 11 career touchdowns. But he's got six this season, so his senior year, he saved his best for last. Those 222 catches, second most among active players in the football bowl subdivision. Daniel Jones has to freelance, thought about tossing it, and Jones gets toppled for a loss. Well, he's Fox got, on the play, and Ross, Dave. Got to throw that ball away, Tom. I think he had a moment there. He didn't. I was looking to see if any linemen were downfield. It's a little RPO. Throw the ball away. Right there, he's got to throw the ball out of bounds. This is a bad decision by Daniel Jones. So now you lose, what, eight yards on the play, second and 18. He's wearing a little bit of the Wallace Wade Stadium turf. 24th sack of the season for North Carolina and a loss officially, Dave, of seven yards. This is Deion Jackson. 
Not a lot available to Jackson with the pile up near the 30-yard line. He got fenced in. Four yards for Jackson. Here comes third and long for Duke now after Fox and Ross again combining on the stop, Dave. And there's a little bit of chatter after the whistle. Yeah, as you would expect, but a little bit of pride, too. I think that these two defenses that run through here early in the game, they kind of sat down and found their collective pride. Here's our first and ten line brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. Two for two on third down for Duke. Past the 45 and a first down. Noah Gray, the sophomore from Lemonster, Massachusetts, has the catch at 16 yards. Yeah, you forget about the Duke tight ends now. Noah Gray, the third tight end on this team, just running kind of a controlled out route, trying to control coverage. The next thing you know, with Jones moving in the pocket, he finds Gray, and Gray a little run after the catch to extend the drive. So nice job by Jones to locate his secondary receiver. Three for three on third down in the game for Jones here in this first quarter. This is deep, wide open, man at the 15. A flag has come out behind the play. Taylor makes the catch and into the end zone as he beat Miles Dorn. But again, there is a penalty marker on the field. Yeah, Greg Ross, and they're going to get offensive pass interference on Chris Taylor. Pass interference, offense number 82. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, excellent protection to give Jones this much time to sort through this play, but you look at the top of your screen right there, yeah, Taylor just shoves Ross to the ground. Now, Jones finds the finds him with the football, but it's going to come back. As they call Chris Taylor for shoving off against, against Greg Ross. That's a second penalty against Duke, Dave. They only average about four penalties per game, fewest in the conference and third fewest in all of the football bowl subdivision. Yeah, it's part of that hidden yardage that David Cutcliffe talks about all the time. Well coached football team, they don't make a lot of mistakes to beat themselves. About 34 yards per game penalized for the Blue Devils. Just a quick strike. Deion Jackson up to the 35 yard line. Four yards on that pass play. Tyler Powell defensively for North Carolina. Well, don't forget next week we're on our way to Louisville, Kentucky, North Carolina State, and Louisville. NC State coming off of that tough loss on Thursday at home on senior night for the Wolfpack against Wake Forest and Louisville, the loss at the Carrier Dome yesterday. Also, senior night for the Syracuse Orange. That pass is incomplete near the 40-yard line. Through the hands of the receiver, Jonathan Lloyd, Trey Morrison defensively for the Tar Heels. Well, Trey Morrison, Tom, we've had uh, a couple of North Carolina games this season. Trey Morrison, number 27, he's kind of their nickel back, but he plays all over the field with the injuries in the secondary. He's had to play some corner, play some safety for him, but he's in the game a ton. He's wind up in the slot to the top up here. Outstanding player. Played well as a freshman. Daniel Jones' passes too high at midfield. Deion Jackson was the target. It's going to bring up fourth down for two. Well, both defenses find a way to get off the field and back to back here after we talked about that collective pride on the sideline for both Duke and North Carolina from a defensive standpoint hadn't seen it in the first two drives both of them step up in the third drive to, to push the other team into a punt Austin Parker punting Daz Newsom the return man and this one flutters off to the right yeah, off the hosel there, Tom. Yeah, he did not catch that <laughs> off the grooves. Yeah, Eric Dungey sprinkled in another 250 yards of total offense at Syracuse was a well-oiled machine, except in the red zone. I guarantee you Dino Babers will not be pleased with their red zone numbers against Louisville last night, but they did a great job of getting themselves a win in a game that could have been a trap game for them with Notre Dame lingering and waiting as they'll travel to Yankee Stadium for the Shamrock Series. Yeah, the last two meetings with Louisville, the Cardinals had outscored Syracuse by 80 points, but last night, 54-23, Couple of rushing TDs and a passing TD for Eric Dungey in his last game at the Dome as a senior. Short of the 40 is Antonio Williams. There is no game. Uh, Singleton comes up in the secondary spot. We've seen Singleton make a couple plays on the perimeter now coming from the secondary spot to make a play. You know, Tom, one last thing about that Circus Louisville game is I don't think it was lost on Dino Babers or his team or, or you as far as that goes. <laughs> What had been happening, what had happened in those two games previous, 50-plus points laid on the Orange by Louisville. They returned the favor last night. Third down and 11. 
One for two on third down in the game. Sling it out to the right to Newsom. He creates across midfield to the Duke side of the 50. And a first down for North Carolina. 14 yards on the play. Well, once again, Vargas, as we see Newsom come up a little bit lame there after that catch. But Vargas, the tight end, is getting key blocks out in space and providing a lot of room on those outside swing throws. Tempo for North Carolina, Jordan Brown. Tar Heels last Saturday, Dave, coming off of that loss against Georgia Tech, 38-28. They had come back to tie the game in the fourth quarter at 28. And now Singleton appears to be shaken up for Duke. Tried to walk it off, but couldn't do it. Well, that's the second leading tackler for this team now. We've seen Dylan Singleton make a number of plays from his safety spot. And he comes up limping. Can't afford to lose anybody. And David Cutcliffe and Larry Fedora will be the first guys to tell you that both teams are really banged up. Let's watch Singleton come up, try to make the play here. Gets folded up a little bit on that left leg, it looked like. When he made the tackle. Yeah, that left lower leg gets trapped underneath on the tackle. Singleton 16 and Duke Blue right in the middle of the, of the picture as it was Jordan Brown on the rush for North Carolina. Always been impressed the way Duke's secondary tackles. They do such a good job and Singleton's up and he's kind of popping off which isn't a good look on that left leg but this has been a secondary that's a smallish secondary. They put guys back there that can run and make plays. They call themselves the cheetahs back there and Singleton's been a big part of that. 11th season for David Cutcliffe. There's a couple of co-defensive coordinators this year in Ben Albert and Matt Guerreri. Great conversation with Coach Albert yesterday in his third year on the Duke staff. Second and seven for North Carolina. Elliott flips it out to Jordan Brown. He's headed towards the first down marker near the 35-yard line. That's enough as Kwanza forced him out. And once again, Dave, not, the chatter continues. Yeah, but you've got to set the edge in the run game. There's not enough defenders out here. So if this player does not set the edge, there's nobody out here for Duke to make the tackle. So if it, there's so much pressure on the defensive end for Duke right now to set the edge in the run game, if he doesn't get it done, there's not enough resources or not enough reinforcements over there to make the play. North Carolina has already rushed for 144 yards in this first quarter as Anthony Ratliff Williams made the tack uh, made the catch rather Brandon Feemster making the tackle five seconds to go here in the first we had touchdowns on the first four possessions two for each team that's going to do it for the first quarter we're all tied at 14 as we play for the victory bell Duke and North Carolina heels at the wall when we come back Blue Devils have won two in a row in the series, haven't won three in a row since the late 1980s, 87 to 89. You saw those old school programs. Awesome artwork depicting the history and tradition and the fabric of this rivalry, which runs across all sports. Today we feature these football programs from North Carolina and Duke, Dave Archer. He's trying to create problems, and they did there. Good job of making a stop there for, for Duke on third down. Freeman Jones trying to tie his long from 49 yards away on the field goal attempt. And he bounced it off the pipe. Incomplete. Jones hits the right upright. And it is no good. Take a look at this kick. Look, they had more than enough on the kick. Just a little bit wide and doink. Off the upright. So much of the chagrin of Larry Fedora. Trying to scratch every time. It's one of those games you feel like offensively you need to kind of scratch for points each time you touch it because both defense is really struggling to get the other ones off the, the other offense off the field. He had been five of eight from the field goals beyond 40 yards away. And now 16 of 23 attempts on the season for Freeman Jones as he misses from 49 yards away. Daniel Jones wants to go deep down the sideline, <laughs> and a flag comes in late. Holding defense, number 25, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, Jared Garner's the wide receiver, the freshman from Harrisburg, North Carolina. But Ross has got his left hand, got hold of the shoulder pad. It was pretty evident right away. He reached up and grabbed. 
Garner by the shoulder pad, and that was a that was a pretty easy call by the official. He was impeding him from getting down the field. Garner does not have a catch this season for Duke. But the penalty moves the football up to the 43-yard line. Daniel Jones, the quarterback, couple of TD tosses in the first quarter, 52 yards and 26 yards. Jones over the middle. TJ ramming on the run. Ramming, carving his way down to the 10-yard line. T.J. Ramming, and Dorn made the tackle. A veteran wide receiver against freshman defensive back. Morrison, the freshman, who I just sung his praises a little bit ago. Ramming, the veteran, beats him to the inside. And you see the run after the catch for T.J. Ramming, why he's in the top five all-time in yards receiving. He got 49 yards on that catch, his second of the game, right into the line with Daniel Jones. Right into Malik Carney, the senior from Alexandria, Virginia. He leads this team in tackles for loss. There's a red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. Duke ninth in the conference in total red zone efficiency. Jones takes off. Inside the five, fights his way near the two-yard line for Daniel Jones, the junior quarterback, Jalen Dalton on the stop. Excellent job by Cole Holcomb, the middle linebacker, blows up the block of Deion Jones or Deion Jackson to to make the play and force third down here. So remember the tight ends down here, a big part of what they do in the passing game. We've already seen Helm catch a touchdown. Copenhaver has five touchdown receptions. Tight ends lined at the top of your screen there, tight right. Three for four on third down, third and goal. Jones faked it and threw it, and a touchdown. Davis Copenhaver, the tight end. You call the Dave Archer, and a score for Duke. You got to pay attention to these big guys. They're outstanding pass catchers in short space. They love to get them the football. Got a little bit of rub right here. Going to get a little rub coming in here, tight end in the flat. Just get a little rub off right there. To the outside goes Copenhaver for the touchdown. His sixth of the year. Excellent design, excellent ex execution. And the third TD pass of the game from Daniel Jones. That's now 16 for the season. Wear him for the extra point. Duke leads on a couple of veterans. T.J. Ramming shoves it down inside the scoring zone. And then senior Davis Copenhaver. Any more, although the team that has possession covers the bell and the stand in the colors of the respective schools. All the way back to 1948. The tradition continues today. Here's Daz Newsom on the return. Can't get to the 20. Newsom taken down. It's time for a check in with our studio in Charlotte, Tommy and Katie. This update is presented by Hardee's later tonight in a sold-out alumni stadium. Number 17, Boston College hosting number two, Clemson. Yeah, with the Atlantic Division title on the line, this will be Clemson's toughest environment since their earlier game with Texas A&M and College Station. First time BC plays a game as a ranked team against a ranked opponent since 2007. Kickoff later tonight, guys. Well, first opportunity for BC to be in that environment as well. This is old hat for Clemson. It'll be interesting to see how BC handles the opportunity against the number two team in the country. Tigers have won seven in a row against Boston College. That one incomplete near midfield. It was Daz Newsom who almost had a game breaker. Oh, it's right through the hands of Newsom. This is a well-thrown ball. It looks like Mark Gilbert. Is that Mark Gilbert out there at the corner spot? Misses the, misses the ball. Goes right, just past his hand, and maybe just enough to blur the vision of Newsom. Carter took the direct snap up to the 25-yard line. Third and manageable after the six-yard gain and the Ben Humphreys touchdown for Duke. That's Dylan Singleton, Dave. Well, that's a tough loss now. That's the number two tackler on this defense in Dylan Singleton, and it does not look like things are going very well for him with the ankle. Boy, just hope he's okay. Third and three. Nathan Elliott, the left-hander, has a wide-open man for a first down. It's Carl Tucker past the 35-yard line. 
And a blown coverage by Duke. Tucker comes clean in the left flat. And a good job of seeing it by Elliott to get the ball out quickly to Tucker so he can get the first down. 11 yards on the pass play to Tucker. Lummy Young, the fourth, is in for Dylan Singleton on that back line and secondary for the Duke Blue Devils. Larry Fedora, seventh season, 15 and 21 on the road as the head coach of the Tar Heels. Michael Carter up the middle of the field, falling forward past the 45 to the 47, and that looks like first down yardage after 11 from Michael Carter, the sophomore. And Tom, we talk about Dylan Singleton being out. Lummy Young is the guy that had the opportunity for the tackle in the hole, and he missed it. So already Singleton is lost, being felt. Lummy Young has not played the last two weeks, has now been forced into duty at that safety spot, and has a missed tackle already on Carter. About 114 yards in the game for Michael Carter, fourth time in his career for 100 yards rushing. Had a monster game against Virginia Tech this year, 165 yards on the ground and a career high. Nathan Elliott puts some air under it, a twisting attempt. Anthony Ratliff Williams has it. And they mark him down to the 17, now the 16-yard line, and the play was 35 yards. Excellent job adjusting the football. The ball needs to be down his stem or down the route, but the ball's thrown behind him a little bit, and an excellent adjustment by the junior receiver to squeeze it. We talked about it off the top. He's a guy they would like to see touch the football at least 10 times in the game. He's already got a touchdown and a big catch right there. One for one in the red zone for North Carolina. They go inside the 10 with Javante Williams. Our heels have a touchdown on their previous trip inside the red zone. That's a first down. First and goal, North Carolina. 11 yards for Williams on the rush. And the only way you can play with tempo is to get first downs. North Carolina did a nice job of that. Down to the two-yard line. That's Williams again, who got undercut and dropped. After a three-yard gain, Ben Humphreys comes up out of the pile. This has been a good defense now down in the red zone. Teams only scoring touchdowns at only 54% of the time. So they've done a nice job of forcing teams to settle for field goals. Coming in prior to today, 24 trips by teams into their red zone. They only given up 13 touchdowns. Going to really have to bow their back here to keep North Carolina out. Second and goal for the Tar Heels. Inside of 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. To the end zone and a touchdown. Javante Williams did the damage for North Carolina from two yards away. Well, just an excellent job in North Carolina controlling the line of scrimmage. Watch their big guys come off and reestablish the line of scrimmage that's about the goal line. Boy, all those Duke defenders were driven back to the goal line by that big offensive line coming off the ball. Excellent block by Vargas again. Boy, give him an assist all day so far. He's done an outstanding blocking on the perimeter and inside. First TD rushing on the season for Williams, and we're tied at 21. The Ratliff Williams sets the table with a circus catch. And then the run game. Freeman Jones kicks it away, our third tie of the game. As Williams scored for North Carolina from two yards out, his first rushing touchdown of the year. So with 9.55 to go in the second quarter, Dave, we got a ball game for the Bell. <laughs> yeah, both these teams have made big plays, and you see the, the big completions for Duke. I mean, it's just been down the field passing. And really, the run game has been in the secondary most of the day as well. But you see the big time plays, 195 yards passing for, for Duke. And we still got almost 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Well, Daniel Jones is 9 of 13, 195 yards, trying to add to the total. The tighter coverage there time by Cole Holcomb and the linebacker is going to flow over and get on Noah Gray, the tight end. Once again, next week, Louisville, Kentucky is our destination. ACC Blitz, powered by the Ram 1500, will get us started. Tommy and Katie at noon, and then me and Dave and Larisha and our outstanding technical crew will be with you. From Louisville, Kentucky for NC State and Louisville. Deion Jackson, incomplete, defended by Dominique Ross. That's a good play. Tight slot throw. Reach across with the right hand, bat it down. Nice job by Ross. 
Four or five on third down of the game for Duke. This is third and long. Third and ten. They must get beyond the 35-yard line. Daniel Jones surveys the situation. The pass complete. Looked like Gray made the catch going to the ground. Enough for a first down and 11 on the play to Gray. Well, man coverage, and Daniel Jones stands in and gets the pressure. They're bringing extra pressure. He took a big shot to let it go, and an excellent catch by Gray, twisting for the first down. So Duke, which had struggled in third down situations this season, has only missed once so far in the game in third down. From a sturdy pocket, Ramming tried to adjust to the football at the 35-yard line, and here comes the penalty flag. Greg Ross was back there, number 35 in Carolina Blue. Now, this is the tough one when the ball is underthrown. Really tough for Ross. He's got to get his head around. That's the saving grace is if you crane your head around to find the ball. Pass interference, defense, number 39. 15-yard penalty, first down. I think he means number 35, Greg Ross. Let's take a look at this. Ross, as he get his head around to Loki, never really locates the football and kind of keeps ramming from come to the inside. But, boy, it's a little bit, a little ticky-tack there. But because Ross didn't locate the ball, I think that was the, the ultimate deciding factor on why you throw the flag. Junior from Jacksonville, Florida, flagged for the infraction. Ball at the 49 of North Carolina. First and 10, Duke and Daniel Jones. And now a timeout taken by the Blue Devils. That is their first of the half with 9.18 on the clock. We will also step aside for CC quarterback challenge app. And there's the quarterback for Duke. Yeah, Daniel Jones has done a nice job of protecting the ball. They've tried to heat him up with pressure. He's done a good job of standing in and making some throws. Three TD passes in the game for Jones. This is low at the 45-yard line. Deion Jackson. There was no whistle. I think Jackson thought he had hit his knee on the turf. <laughs> well, I don't know why he stopped. Because, he stopped. As it turns out, so did the defender. So they both turned back and looked at the official, and neither one of them, they wouldn't have blown dead. So then he said, okay, let's play. So he ends up getting four yards on the play. The first catch of the game for Jackson. Looked like his knee was on the ground, but yeah, this late, one to ramming. A late buzz down here. Yeah, late buzz down to the official that they wanted to look at this play to see if, in fact, the ball was caught by Deion Jackson and then was he down when he caught the ball, which I think might have been Deion Jackson's reaction. Maybe not so much that I catch it. It was that I was already down and there was no whistle. If it stands, it would be his first catch of the ball game. He's impacted the game in a lot of ways. Certainly the last couple weeks, Deion Jackson is over 100 yards rushing. It's hard to tell where did the ball touch the ground there. His, his knee's certainly down right there. There's no question about that. So the ball where it's spotted right now is correct. Let's see if he catches the ball. And this is the second play. Threw it inside the ramming before the, the buzz down. And he took the shot on the back end incomplete, but that play is all for naught because the officials deemed they need to take a look at the Jackson catch or no catch. This is our second review. If you recall, Dave Archer had a quick call on the first review, which was the TD rush by Michael Carter, who dove for the pylon and stayed in bounds 40 yards and a touchdown for North Carolina back in the first quarter. All right, let's check in on an injury report for North Carolina, and Larisha has more. Well, I was just told that Antonio Williams, we saw him limp off the field um, earlier in the game. He was carted to the locker room. I'm waiting for an update regarding his status. Now, Malik Carney, he is currently in the tent. Apparently, they are working with him right now. So as soon as I have more information on both of those guys, I'll let you know. But again, Antonio Williams, he was once carted off the field. And now Malik Carney is in the injury tent being looked at now. Wow, two big-time players there. Let's take a look at this. this I'm going to give I'm going to give Deion Jackson the catch there. Looked like he secured that. Now the ball did brush the ground as long as he secures it. That's a completion, don't you, Tom? You don't want to go out on a limb, do you? You're Dave Archer kind of fence rider. Dave Archer is one for one so far today. I'm going to give uh, Deion Jackson the catch there. As far as reviews are concerned, our referee today is Jeff McGonaghy. He's the one with the headset on. And the longer this goes, the the worse it is for Duke and Deion Jackson. They're going to. Replace the ball, get the time right, all that stuff. All right, well, they review this. And now McGonaghy's going to take the headset off. So let's hold on just one second. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Second down. There you go. It is a catch in our two coverage. So the play is upheld. Second and six for Duke. And Archer's two for two on reviews today. 
Daniel Jones has a little bit of time. Can he use it down the sideline? Bounces away. Flag is out. You got to look back. Uh, it, it's this is going to get called on on Ross. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15-yard penalty, first down. This is the tough part of the underthrown ball. See, Ross is not going to look back. He's going to run right in to Garner along the sidelines. He just never locates the football. So as the receiver tries to gear down to make the play, he's impeded by the defender to come back and get to the football, and that's where the flag comes. If Ross can just get his head around, I don't think he's going to get that call. Jackson from the 30. Turns down the seam to the 20-yard line, and Jackson should have first down yardage. He got 10. Well, Deion Jackson, a guy that they would like to get the ball to as many ways as they can. He's become the bell cow, Tom. Coming into this game, he carried the ball 50 more times than anybody else. He was supposed to be sharing the dues with Britton Brown, but Britton Brown has been banged up. And so it's been it's been Jackson. That pass near the 15 is caught. Five yards on the play to TJ Ramming. You know, talking to Cutcliffe yesterday, David said we like to share those duties. We got uh, different backs that can carry the football, but in this situation, we've had to we've had to lean on Deion Jackson, the sophomore, and he stepped up big time for him. One for one in the red zone with a touchdown. This is Ramming, and he is down to about the eight-yard line as Ramming makes catch number four. Dave, that is now 17 straight games with three or more catches for Ramming. Well, and Ramming is a good guy to go to down here because of this veteran understanding how body position is going to be in tight coverages to make contested catches. But Jones is extremely sharp, Tom, throwing the ball right on the money. First and goal. This one is caught right at the five. It's Trayvon Lee who makes the catch for four yards. But Duke using a ton of receivers here. There's John Papuchis, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina, is trying to find a way to get a stop. Eight, eight different guys have caught the football. Now, where are you? You're trying to find Ramming. He's right down here at the bottom. Don't forget Daniel Jones running with the ball in the quarterback draw. <laughs> Jones gave it off to the goal line and a touchdown. Deion Jackson from four yards away. And Duke pulls in front of Carolina. Now, once again, it looks like a block on the perimeter, and I think maybe Noah Gray, the tight end, is the guy that's going to get the block. Number 87, going to get the key block right there that allows Jackson to turn back to the inside. See, right here's your key block. That allows Jackson to, to kick it back to the inside. Noah Gray, those, we talked about the blocking by Vargas for North Carolina. Noah Gray, the tight end for Duke there, got a key block to allow Jackson to get in the end zone. Seventh rushing touchdown of the season, Deion Jackson. That is the most for the Blue Devils this year. Wareham to make it 28-21 with the extra point. They get some confirmation to make sure that the plane was broken before the knee touchdown, and they get that confirmation. So Duke with another lead here, Tom. First rushing touchdown of the game. Daniel Jones had thro thrown three TD passes to Taylor Helm and Copenhaver. Prior to that short run for the score for Deion Jackson. 28-21. Back in the day, North Carolina and Duke have met every year since 1922. Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium opened up back in 1929. Named for Wallace Wade, the head coach from 1931 to 1950, 110 wins, the most in school history. And in 1942, they played the Rose Bowl right here at Wallace Wade Stadium. 28-21, Duke coming off of its impressive victory on the road against Miami last week, their first since 1976, the first meeting between those two programs. 20-12 in the rain. Just past the 20 yard line on the return, 19 yards, Anthony Ratliff Williams. Well, we heard that, uh, that Antonio Williams was a little banged up or was carted off. You see him running along the sidelines, and we carted off had a different connotation than we normally think of carted off. It's how far you have to go to get an x ray. North Carolina's got to walk way down there. When they come into the stadium, the x-ray facilities are way down there as well. So, yes, he was in a cart, but that was to facilitate getting him to the x-ray to make sure he was okay. Obviously, running along the sidelines, he seems to be doing okay. So, 
good to hear and good to see for North Carolina Antonio Williams potentially be back in this football game so there was a holding penalty on the return and that was against North Carolina so that backs them up to the 11 yard line Duke winner last year in 2017 second straight in the series worst starting field position of the game for North Carolina and Newsom cannot get away from Marquise Waters Side defense number 51 lined up in the neutral zone five yard penalty first down. Well, Tom, that's the second time we've seen North Carolina uh, Duke make a play defensively that goes by the wayside. Good play by Waters out in the flat. We saw it earlier by Ben Humphreys and it goes away because of the offside. Play. Nathan Elliott, 7 of 11, 85 yards passing in the game. First and five after the infraction against the Blue Devils. Daz Newsom. Newsom races second level. This is Daz Newsom across midfield. Newsom with the race to the end zone, and he wins it for North Carolina. Daz Newsom. Well, Daz Newsom is an explosive player. Now, here's where you have to set the edge because North Carolina has been getting to the edge with no problem. Once again, the Duke, Duke crashes defensively. No one out there to turn the ball carrier back to the inside. And if there's one guy, if you're Duke, that you don't want in the open field, it's Daz Newsom. He's got great speed. He just shows it, and he shoves it in the end zone for North Carolina. 84 yards away, Daz Newsom goes the distance to the house for Newsom with 6.14 to go in the second quarter. Larry Fedora's team has tied this game up. Well, it's been a, a day of big plays. It all started with Ratliff Williams. They had the ball being directly snapped to him. Then Chris Taylor catches, spins out of the tackle, runs for the touchdown. Michael Carter comes back with an outstanding run for the touchdown. Then Jones founds his tight end helm for a touchdown. And then another tight end. Copenhagen caught his sixth touchdown of the year. Then you got the big offensive line comes off. Williams pounds it in for North Carolina. Jackson gets a key block on the outside from his tight end, and he pounds it in. And then Daz Newsom shoves it in the end zone. We have eight touchdowns on the day and still have six minutes to go in the second quarter. First rushing TD of the season for, season for Newsom. That is the longest play from scrimmage for North Carolina this year. And we are tied for the fourth time in the first half with 6.14 to go as Newsom goes 84 yards. It's a one-play drive, 33 seconds, 28 all, North Carolina and Duke. There will be no return from Jackson on this kickoff. Well, we're tied at 28 and right now, here in the second quarter. It is time to test your knowledge with today's Affleck Game Trivia. Here's the question. The UNC Duke series began in 1888. What year did the tradition of the victory bell start? We're back with the answer in a moment. We may have mentioned it during the course of the broadcast so far. <laughs> That's what they're playing for. Duke has won four of the last six and the last two. It's on their side of the field right now, tied at 28. They run it with Lloyd. Swallowed at the 26-yard line, just a yard. Well, Dominic Tom, Ross. And Tom, that's a very similar play Daz Newsom just scored on. It's a jet sweep type of play, but a good job by Ross and by Holcomb, the linebackers, to get out and set an edge, stop the run from getting to the perimeter, turn it back to the inside and make the tackle for a minimal gain. Duke six and three on the season, two and three in conference play. Jones steps up, lets it fly. Knocked away at the 35-yard line. Looking for Taylor, and it's D.J. Ford back there for North Carolina. Well, once again, this is a ball that's underthrown, Tom. Ball just comes down, but this time the timing of the defender colliding with the receiver is right on the money. Taylor gets hit as the ball arrives prior to him them having to come back through the defensive back. So a nice play there defensively. Five of six on third down in the game for Duke. This is third and nine. 
was not a strong suit prior to today for Duke this season. They were 10th in the conference on third down. Jones flushed from that pocket, running to his right, turns it upfield, past the 35 and more. Daniel Jones, a first down on the scamper. Well, talked about it, Tom. This guy can run far better than people give him credit for. See, as soon as this man coverage, everybody down the field, there's nobody accounting for the quarterback. And all Jones has to do is flank the defense, and he's off to the races. And a big play on third down, third and long. That's one you don't like giving up as a defensive coordinator or run to a quarterback on third and long. Jones got 20 yards on his run. The handoff to Deion Jackson running down the 45-yard line. Loses one thanks to Miles Dorn, number one. And the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Miles Dorn does a nice job of coming out of the secondary. We'll take a look at number one. Going to come out of the secondary. Got to make the one-on-one -on -one tackle in space. This is what Deion Jackson wants to be, out one-on-one. -on -one. And a nice play by Dorn. Had eight tackles a week ago against Georgia Tech. We had a game, Tom, earlier in the season where he had 14 tackles in the game. Maneuvering up the middle, Deion Jackson past midfield to the North Carolina side of the 50 after five yards. Cole Holcomb, who had 22 tackles last week, makes the play. 22 tackles and the loss to Georgia Tech, 38-28 for North Carolina. Well, that Georgia Tech running game is rolling right now. That was a 377 yards a game. And get the Canes coming up. Third and five. Daniel Jones pass. Lloyd leaps to make the catch. Down to the 43-yard line, six yards. First down for Duke, and they convert another third down. Now, Lloyd's going to come to the inside on the slant. He does a good job of securing the catch, and I thought that was a nice job. Lloyd wasn't worried about turning and running with the ball. Did a nice job catching that ball, ball on his back shoulder, falling forward for the first down on third down. Seven of eight on third down of the first half for Duke. Little play fake for Jones. Over the middle, trying to thread it in near the 25-yard line to Daniel Helm. He couldn't hang on. He has a touchdown catch today of 26 yards down in the first quarter. Well, big hit by Ford. The safety's going to knock this ball out. He juggles it right here, but Ford makes sure, number 16, the safety, he's going to come in and make sure he doesn't have a chance to catch it on the carom. Boy, that ball had a lot of pop on it. Jones stuck that one in there to helm. He couldn't, he couldn't squeeze it. Jones has thrown for 233 yards here in the first half. Threw for just 130 in the rain against Miami last week. He will keep this one. Wow. wow. 32 yard line, Dave, and that's a first down. Wow. It's a zone. Yards. Yeah, it's the classic zone read play. Daniel Jones ran out of the pocket on the pass play. This time it's a designed run for Jones. Just picks his way through, and it's the part of your game or part of his game that gets unsung. He does a nice job from the timely running standpoint. And Tyler Powell still down on the ground. This is a guy that's really emerged for North Carolina in an injury plague year for them. Tyler Powell has been a guy that's made a lot of plays for him. Senior from Midlothian, Virginia. We saw Powell have a huge day against Syracuse a couple of weeks ago. Tom had two sacks in the game. Was, but they've really been beat up on, on both these teams have really been, been beat up. But North Carolina in particular, Larry Fedora's team really beat up right over here. Seems to be seen. Yeah, just the just the collision between the two, the battle of attrition that happens with the big guys in the middle. He got tangled up with Jack Wollabar. And for a preview of halftime, we go to our Charlotte studios, Tommy and Kate. North Carolina took the orange to double overtime at the dome. Ended up losing that game, Dave, but they are much better than their record would indicate. It's a good sign to see Daniel Jones at the controls for Duke. Little play fake. Is ramming. Well, Doesn't get a lot. Just yeah, one. That's a nice play by Malik Carney. Talk about setting the edge in the run game. Good job there by Malik Carney. They try to fool him a little bit with a reverse play, and Carney does a good job of staying free on that backside. Leader in sacks, both in 2016 and 17 for North Carolina. Malik Carney, the senior from Alexandria, Virginia, number 53, Carolina Blue. Daniel Jones in Duke Blue. Another run for Jones and another first down. And near the 15-yard line as Jones 
Williams tiptoes out of bounds, forced out by Patrice Rene. And Deion Jackson gets just enough of the linebacker, Dominique Ross, to give Jones. Watch, watch Jack, or out in front. I'm sorry, it's the freshman. It's a freshman, uh, Durant. Mateo Durant slipped in the game, the freshman running back, and he got just enough on the edge to make a block to allow Jones to get outside and get the first down. Nine carries and 55 yards in the first half for Daniel Jones. And hand the ball off to Deion Jackson, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Four yards for Deion Jackson. 97 is Jalen Dalton at the bottom of that pile for the Tar Heels. Here's our first and ten line. It's brought to you by Lending Tree. The official loan shopping partner of the ACC. You can see they need to get to the five-yard line with 143 and counting to go in the second quarter for Duke. All tied up at 28. Four ties in the course of this game. Jones to the end zone. It's incomplete. And threw the ball back to the inside. Good coverage on the outside that time by Patrice Rene. And there's a flag down. Looks like an illegal man downfield potentially for Duke. Larry Fedor going to have a conversation. Decide what he wants to do here. Make it third and make it third and about five. If he turns the flag down, turns the penalty down. Now the receiver downfield offense that penalty's declined. Third down. So third and five. So if he decides to turn it down and try to get off the field here on third down. Now what Duke's trying to do it up to this point Tom was trying to eat as much clock as they could to try to get the double dip score before half and then score coming out of the half they get the ball to start the second half North Carolina bluffing blitz right here two for two in the red zone with a couple of touchdowns for Duke Jones looking off to the right side and it's nearly intercepted by Malik Carney looking for Lloyd and Carney had it go off his hands. Well, the veteran saw this play all the way. He sees Jackson released in the flat. Here's Carney out here. Carney just going to mirror the back, and whoa, oh boy. He had dreams of potentially dancing in the far end zone. This is a room service throw. He was thinking back to his days as a tight end in high school. Just didn't squeeze it right there, but a good stop by North Carolina forced Duke to kick a field goal. 28 yard attempt, Colin Wareham. In his first action this season did Missed not it. hit that one properly. That is wide left. Well, that's a big stop for North Carolina because, as I said, they get the ball back with a minute and a half left here. And we know Duke's going to start the ball with the second half. That would have given them an opportunity to potentially do a, a two-score scenario. Just the second miss of the season for Wareham, who's now 7 of 9 on field goal attempts missing 28 yards away. We've seen many players assume the responsibilities of quarterback for North Carolina this season. Dave. Well, Nathan Elliott's the guy that's been the most in the game. Certainly, Chaz Surratt was a guy that was supposed to be compete for the starting job. But Cade Fortin came in for a little while. He's potentially available today, but he's been banged up. Jace Reuter got hurt last week. Uh, they've, they've had a ton of people banged up this week, but Manny Miles, who holds for them, might be the backup today, and we know Cade Fortin is in uniform, so not sure who might have to come in. Carter made the catch. Even Anthony Ratliff-Williams was suggested to us to be on the depth chart as far as the quarterbacks were concerned. Yeah, that was an emergency scenario. That might be why Cade Fortin's in uniform. He's been banged up, so I'm not sure they potentially wanted to do that, but Anthony Ratliff-Williams, his ability to affect the game Receiver, runner. We've already seen him run for a touchdown from the quarterback position in the Wildcats, so they're not opposed to putting him in there. Elliott. Carter. Out of bounds to stop the clock near the 25-yard line. Well, Duke has really tightened up here defensively against Larry Fedora's team here, and now forced third down. By the way, Michael Carter just made the tackle on Michael Carter. Don't get that every day in North Tom. Carolina. No, you don't. So Can't Michael Carter better. for Duke is Michael Carter the second. Okay. We'll go with that for the differentiation. Two, two of four. Yes, yes, the second. Two of four on third down, just beyond the 25-yard line for North Carolina. Next week, NC State and Louisville. Today, the battle for the victory bell is all tied at 28. Elliott has the pass over the middle and caught. And on the run, Deami Brown. Brown making his way past midfield in the Duke real estate and near the 40-yard line for Deami Brown. What a flag.
flag down, Tom, on the play. It's in that secondary area, the area where you either get offensive pass interference or was there some defensive holding? Let's see. They weigh this. It looks like North Carolina retreating here. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense number 80. 15 yard penalty. Third down. Wow, they're going to call, I guess, a block on Vargas, who's been really good today, blocking out in space. But Jake Vargas, the tight end, and boy, Larry Fedora is beside himself on this call. That nullifies a play of 35 yards to Deami Brown. Uh, so the only thing I can think of, Tom, is it's a peel back block, which is they've tried to eliminate the blindside block. I just. Didn't see a, a good, we didn't have a good look at it. So third and 12 for the 18 for North Carolina. The pass falls incomplete, looking for Thomas Jackson. Think about senior the, from Charlotte. Think about the change in fortune there for North Carolina. They're going to have the ball in Duke territory after the Deami Brown catch and run. And now we're going to be punting for the shadow of their own goalposts after the penalty on Vargas. So huge change of. And, North, and Duke's going to have an opportunity here now to, to maybe potentially put some points on the board. So Lent will punt to Ramming, standing at his 39-yard line. Second punt of the game for Lent for North Carolina. White timeout! Time and a timeout out. for the Tar Heels. So they take their first timeout with 103 to go here in the second quarter. How about the legend? You got me a legends list over there. We're gonna have to find that. We're, we're gonna do that later. Find, we, you won't believe some of the the people that are on this list. It's a who's who. The legends this week. They'll be a part of the legends ceremony at the ACC championship game. Now Lent went down after the punt. Ramming picks it up at the 25. A flag has been thrown in the area of the punt from Lent at about the six yard line as Ramming scooped it up. Well, Javon Jackson is the guy that ran into the punter, it looked like. Well, the punt was 57 yards, but the flag is going to go against Duke. Uh, it's going to be, it looks like, because they're looking at the sideline, you you wouldn't even hesitate if it's a... Running into the kicker. Yeah, it's a five-yard Defense penalty. number 32. Penalty's declined. First down. The five-yard variety. Larry Fedora is still upset. Let's take a look here. And I, I don't even know what roughing the kicker is anymore. I mean, I'm not sure. Is that Hill, the linebacker that ran into yeah, Brandon Hill is number 32, Dave. Here's some of these le legends. Brian Dawkins, a Hall of Famer. Look at Spurrier, Do Bobby Bowden, really? Josh Nesbitt, Robin Oban, Ed Reed, Mario Williams, Don McPherson, uh, Herman Moore, big time. All those guys, all big time players. Friday night of championship weekend and a big legends dinner. All those guys will be present. That's a that is a who's who. That might be the finest list. And no defense to anybody else has been a legend down the down through the years, but certainly that group, unprecedented. December 1st, Bank of America Stadium, Charlotte, North Carolina. There are several scenarios, and we'll discuss those as the game progresses. Uh, Duke would like to try to pick up the pace here a little bit. A little surprised they ran it there on first down with less than 45 seconds to go. 30 seconds of counting for Daniel Jones. Pass right near midfield is incomplete. Looking for Jackson. Ross was right on his hip. Incomplete. 26 seconds on the clock here both, in the second quarter. Both these teams play a version of a 4-2-5 defense. Now, Ross is a little bigger, but he's used to be a defensive back, so he's used to operating in space. Number three does a nice job there of, of making Jones throw the ball way out in front of Jackson. But those two are matched up down here, linebacker and running back. Third and four. Seven of nine on third down. Daniel Jones up the middle. Jones continues to run. Jones inside the 10, and Daniel Jones takes it to the end zone for Duke. Well, Tom, I've been, ta I've been talking about it. You see the Duke fans reacting. Daniel Jones is not considered a runner by most of the teams that come in to play Duke or play Duke on the road. But his ability to take off 
has proven out all day today here in the first half. And just his ability to take off. Just tremendous job of running with the ball. 61 yards for Daniel Jones and the jaunt to the house for Duke. With 16 seconds to go in the first half, the Blue Devils on top, 35-28. Uh, here's Jones just comes straight up the field and nobody pays attention to him except for Britt the safety and Jones shows the speed that again I don't think anybody realizes he had we saw it on tape a, a week ago against Miami and that great defense in Miami they underestimated his ability to run with the ball but you see his ability to just step on the accelerator the 6'5 230 pound Daniel Jones just took off in the quarterback draw Here's the safety right here, Britt. Everybody else is running downfield and they're not paying attention to Jones. Freeze it now. See, nobody's, this is the only guy that's looking at him. The two safeties are the only ones looking at him. And he just steps by the two safeties and speed that I, I'm pretty sure most people underestimate. He showed it there. Second rushing TD of the season. The Tar Heel fans that have made the trip stunned by the run by Daniel Jones. Who now has 17 career rushing TDs. And that's 61 yard run, a career long for Jones. He now has 113 yards rushing in the first half. And that is a career high for Daniel Jones. Radliff Williams looking for daylight past the 20 and spun down 23 yard line. Anthony Radliff Williams, just eight seconds to go in the quarter. Daniel Jones. 61 yards on a run from Jones. Well, Tom, they end up getting what they had wanted to begin. They missed the field goal, which was going to give them that kind of double dip. Score before the end of the half, and then to get the ball to start the second half. They end up getting it anyway. Give their defense some credit. After North Carolina got the ball back after the missed field goal, they forced the three and out. Now they got a little bit of a break on the, on the block on Vargas, which put North Carolina deep in their own territory, but gave Jones an opportunity to stake a lead for, for Duke here at the end of the half. And the Blue Devils are going to get the ball to start the second half. So that will end the first half. The punctuation mark from Daniel Jones. How about between these two teams, Dave? 768 total yards, 61 of them on the run by Daniel Jones to close out the first half and a 35-28 lead for the Duke Blue Devils. What a first half for the Victory Bell. <laughs> if you like offensive football, you came to the right place. These two teams are lighting up the scoreboard. Daniel Jones accounted for four touchdowns, three passing and one rushing in the first half. For Duke's got to set that edge and turn those runners back inside to where Duke's Duke's tacklers are. The 272 yards rushing for North Carolina in the first half is a season high for an entire game. Deion Jackson the return here in the third quarter, just beyond the 15-yard line for Deion Jackson, a return of 16 yards. Take a look at the scoring. We talked about it. It's just been unbelievable how many scoring drives these two teams have put together back and forth. Now, the impetus now is going to be on North Carolina. They're down a score, and Duke's got the football. So a big moment here in the second half as we look at all that scoring. North Carolina going to have to make a play defensively to kind of get their offense back on the field so they can hold serve and put points on the board. Tied four times in the first half. The worst starting field position of the game for Daniel Jones and Duke. His first pass is on target and complete. For the Blue Devils, that's gonna be number 84, Trayvon Lee. And we talked about how many, eight different guys got passes for Duke in the first half. Trayvon Lee, not have any stats coming in. Another catch for him. 233 yards passing in the first half for Jones. He's now one for two this half. That is incomplete. Yeah, good pressure off the edge. This time, North Carolina comes with more than Duke can block. As you take a look at the numbers in the first half, 398 yards of total offense, 370 for North Carolina. Duke, 8 of 10 on third down. North Carolina only faced five third downs in the first half and route to all those yards. Duke's total offense average for the season is 397 yards per game. Daniel Jones again. Slides past the 35-yard line. First down for Duke. Daniel Jones goes 12 yards. A zone read play. Deion Jackson is the guy he's going to fake the ball to on the jet sweep. Good job of Jones eating up, essentially, in rusher there in Tamon Fox. And Jones steps up the field for another first down. 
First and ten for the Blue Devils from their own 36-yard line. In the sunshine of Durham, North Carolina, all the time for Jones, but he goes down. Jason Strobridge, number 55, four-yard loss on the sack. Tom, just a two-man pass rush, too. Malik Carney going to step out, the number 53, their main pass rusher, and Strobridge comes off that right side of Daniel Jones and finds a way to be trailing the right tackle. Just a three-man pass rush, rush uh, produces the sack. Second sack of the game for North Carolina. That pass is incomplete. Looked like ramming. Trying to turn it upfield, but without the football as Ross chases, chasing him down. Boy, a big drop by ramming. That's going to make it third and long. Ramming catches that ball. He may get the first down, but it's certainly going to be third and short. So an opportunity here for North Carolina to try to get off the field on third down. Jones just won for his last seven pass attempts. Works with a five receiver set on third and 14. Jones with the time, ramming, sliding near midfield. The catch made at the 48-yard line. It's a first down for Duke on the grab by ramming at 17 yards. Yeah, good read by Jones. Going to throw the ball into the pressure. Pressure coming off the slot by Ross, number three. That's exactly where Jones throws it. Throws it right in that hole where the extra defender will be covering in zone. Fifth catch for T.J. Ramming, the senior from Powder Springs, Georgia. They will look his way again. North Carolina side of the 50. Carney makes the tackle. And we go down to Larisha Harris for Gatorade. Heard around the cooler. Well, when we spoke to head coach David Cutcliffe this week, I asked him what was the theme of this week, especially since it's a big rivalry game. And he said this week's focus was all about the program. What does this program mean to you? He says it's more than just tunnel emotion. He wants to see some fierceness in what's trying to be accomplished. And that's that accomplishment today is keeping that victory bell here in Durham, which has been here for the past two years. Yeah, and you got to say it like Coach Cutcliffe says it, program. you got to say program. It's not program, it's program. Love it. Uh, one of the great human beings right there, David Cutcliffe. You see what he's done here at Duke. And yes, under 500, you got to remember what this program looked like. Program, I'm sorry, program. before he got here uh, and what they've done here in the buildup of what this, uh, what this place looks like. David Cutcliffe, phenomenal job. Chris Taylor does a nice job on that catch and run inside the 25. 16 yards Jones to Taylor Jones making good quick decisions much like he did in the first half North Carolina is so concerned about Daniel Jones taking off with the ball They're not rushing up field quite as hard And so that's given him some time to sit back there and make these some of these quick easy throws Third catch of the game for Chris Taylor first and ten Jones Trying to put some touch on it a diving attempt by Chris Taylor just not enough Boy, just a little bit more air under the ball from Jones, and this is the touchdown. He let it go well before Taylor was on his route to the end zone because of pressure coming off the edge. More of the people than Jones could get blocked. You see Malik Carney coming in free on Jones, so he had to let it go well in advance and tried to hang it up, but just not quite enough air. 11th play of the drive for Duke. Second and 10. Jones pass incomplete. Looking for Copenhaver. Another nice crisp throw by Jones right on the money. Copenhaver is not able to squeeze it. And so now you're faced again to third and long. This has been a tough scenario. North Carolina has not been able to win. These are normally you win 75% of the time on third and long. And North Carolina has not been able to do that today. 10 of 12 on third down of the game for Duke. Jones gave it off to Jackson. And he gets to about the 22-yard line. That is well short of the marker. Just two yards on the play with 11 and a half minutes to go in the third. D.J. Ford had the tackle. A good opening drive by Duke to push the ball down the field into the scoring zone. So now they have an opportunity to add three to make this a two-score game. So Coach Fedora sends Colin Wareham for his second attempt. Missed from 28 yards in the second quarter. This will be from 40. And Wareham, who is now 7 of 9 on the season. From 40 yards away, it got blocked. Blocked by Carolina and loose near the 40-yard line. Still loose. Tom, it's Taman Fox, number 12, is who bursts through and blocks the kick. 
Tremendous push in the middle by Taman Fox, number 12. You're going to see it very evident. He's going to blow right through the North Carolina right side, right over in this area right here. Right through the middle, Taman Fox, the defensive end, gets that big right hand in the air. Six foot three, 250 pound sophomore does a good job of batting the ball down and exactly what the doctor ordered if you're Larry Fedora. So Wareham now 0 for 2. Missed in the second quarter now. Had that one blocked in the third. Brown and Carter, the backs either side of Nathan Elliott, the junior. It's going to be Jordan Brown. Three yards for Jordan Brown. Yeah, and the difference in the zone read for North Carolina is Nathan Elliott not as not a runner. Uh, you know he'll pull it down from time to time, but he's not going to hurt you in the run game very much. And so North Duke is not paying attention to Nathan Elliott at all in the zone read game. 10 of 15 for 98 yards passing for Elliott. Michael Carter to midfield. Sheds a man and more and finally pushed out of bounds and a flag behind the play as was Carter going out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Again, a flag on the play. Holding offense, number 86. Mm, got the tight end Tucker down. out in front of the play. That's the focal point block on these swing throws to the outside. It's essentially a screen to the back. And Tucker's number 86. He's going to be out in front of the play and he's got to hold this block a long time and literally does hold. Providing Carter the opportunity. Here's the block right up here. And just did not let go of the defender in the minds of the officials. And Carter, nice running after the after the catch. But boy, Duke really wounded in the back end, Tom. We talked about Dylan Singleton hurt. They're, they're about three deep at the safety spot now, trying to find somebody that can make a play. Elliott, pitch and Williams. He goes out of bounds short of midfield. Brandon Hill will push him at the sideline. There is no game. Duke has really struggled to get the run corralled and stopped. And see a thousand yards in just the last ten quarters, ten touchdowns. Duke really struggled to slow it. I mean, you've got a, the ability to run it. Obviously, you've got a defense on its heels because at that point you can do just about anything. 276 yards rushing in the game for North Carolina. Third and five. Elliott. That one deflected and knocked down to the turf. Trayvon McSwain, number 95 in Duke Blue. Well, Tom, it's a huge play by McSwain because Ratliff Williams is wide open coming underneath on the shallow drag route. But because McSwain got his big paws in the air, he bats the ball down. And Elliott just kicking himself. You're going to see, here comes Ratliff Williams, number 17, and underneath right there. And because McSwain elevates and bats the ball down, that's why they're off the field on third down. Ramming weights for the punt from Lent at about the 17-yard line. Going to go out of bounds, and they're going to mark it at about the 24-yard lines. Last win in the series for North Carolina came in 2015 at home against Duke, which has won the last two, including last year. 27-17. Around the edge is Jackson and out of bounds. What's happened with North Carolina, Tom, is they're either dropping eight into coverage or they're crowding the line of scrimmage. So if you miss a tackle like that right there, there's nobody in the back end. As soon as Deion Jackson clears, now it's just a safety. He has to make a shoestring tackle to keep him from going the distance. 18 yards on the previous play for Jackson. This one will be much less for Deion Jackson. Two yards ran into Jalen Dalton. Senior from Clemens, North Carolina. 6'6", 300 pounds. Two and a half sacks on the season for Dalton. Both these teams are so beat up on the defensive side of the ball, they have had to go deep, deep into their, into their rosters. Jones, incomplete, Daniel Helm. Pass intended for Daniel Helm. Uh, 
give Cole Holton credit here. Let's see if we get any heat. Let's see if North Carolina is able to heat up Jones at all on the play. It's a it's a RPO run pass option. No pretty clean pocket for Jones. He ends up getting batted down a little bit late. But Cole Holcomb, the linebacker, number 36, does just enough at the back end of the route to, to kind of blur the vision of Helm on the catch. Third down for Duke, call it third and eighth. Jones had to get rid of it quickly. Catches me, Jonathan Lloyd, near the 42-yard line and a first down. What a grab by Lloyd. Now, Jones is going to get hammered here. For some reason, nobody blocks anybody up front, and Jones gets crushed on the play. But the catch by Lloyd, look at the contested catch by Lloyd on third down to extend the drive. Big-time play. Fourth catch of the game for Jonathan Lloyd. It yields a first down for Duke. Jones throws on the run and right into the bread basket of the receiver, Daniel Helm. We've seen Jones play a lot of football, Tom. We've seen him play at a high level. And we've seen him struggle from time to time. Saw him throw five interceptions a couple years ago or last year against Virginia. I think he's as sharp as I've ever seen him. He's really seeing the, the game extremely well. He's throwing the ball quickly. He's seeing coverage. He's doing an outstanding job of distributing the ball. On second and six. It's his man again. Chris Taylor got away and down ball to the 22 out, with the ball. Coming out at the end of the play, North Carolina thinks it has the football, and it does. Tar Heel football on the fumble. Now Chris Taylor steps out of the tackle of it looked like Bell the corner and then got a little lackadaisical with ball security. As Malik Carney comes up with a football. Huge moment right here for North Carolina in the route. Every major Division I college football game. Malik Carney, who returned to fumble 20 yards last week against Georgia Tech for a touchdown, the first defensive TD of the season for North Carolina, and it's Carter on the run. Well, he's missed a good number of games. It's just this is sixth game on the year, Tom, and Malik Carney, and he's, he's a factor every time he plays. That's a next-level player right there. He has a knack for getting to the quarterback, knack for getting the ball out. Made a big play right there with North Carolina in the biggest. Leads the team in sacks this season. Five and a half for Carney. Made a big play defensively. We'll see what Nathan Elliott and the offense can do with it. Elliott, too high. For more on Malik Carney, we go down to the sidelines and Larisha Harris. Yeah, Tom, as you stated, he did have that big play. And getting after the ball is something that he worked on this year to help him evolve as a player. Carney told me that a wise man once told him the good players make the ordinary tackles, get the ordinary sacks, but the great players go after the ball. And that's exactly what he did to get that forced fumble. A wise man, huh? That was a wise, that was wise information there. But uh, Carney is a big time player and uh, had 10 tackles last week against Georgia Tech as well. The flag is out on third down. In fact, there are two of them, one on each side of the field, as it was Michael Carter on the carry for North Carolina. Our referee today, Jeff McGonaghy. There are multiple fouls during the play. Offside, defense, number 90, holding, offense, number 54. Pellings will offset, repeat the down, third down. Sure, he's come in here and solidified a defense for for, uh, for Duke. Of course, Joe Giles Harris, the guy, his roommate, has been together forever, not playing today. First time he said since he was a sophomore that Joe Giles Harris, the leading tackler for Duke, wasn't on the field with him. And he said, I don't care about the North Carolina record. The job is to maintain possession of the bell. And they will hold on third down. Elliott had to throw it away. Yeah, did a good job against the run. We talked about one of our principal keys coming back was to turn the run game back to the inside. They did that on the first run of this series, forced third and long, and then a little bit of pressure forces Elliott out of the pocket. He has to throw it away. So maybe Duke's best defensive series of the game right there. Third three and out of the game for North Carolina. Hunter Lent back on the field. T.J. Ramming counts his teammates, and he's ready to go for the return as he stands at his own 39-yard line. Lent just got it away. Ramming wants the fair catch, and he makes a tough one at the 42. The punt was 27 yards. There is no return. And we're back after a word from your local ACC station. Likely. Best start of the game.
far as field position is concerned for the Blue Devils. And there was some movement on the line. Looked like Dalton did. Offside, defense number 97. Making contact with an offensive lineman. Five yard penalty, first down. Well, you got to know as a quarterback, I think Nathan Elliott's done this a little bit to, to Duke as well. I think Duke's been called for three offside penalties defensively. You got to know that the defenses are a little antsy. They've had a tough time getting both offenses stopped. So use that to your advantage if you're a quarterback. This is a veteran quarterback in Daniel, Daniel Jones. Use the hard count. Try to pull them off. That's a free five yards. NC State in Louisville, just the ninth all-time meeting. We'll have it for you on Raycom Sports next Saturday. Jones down the sideline. It's incomplete. Chris Taylor couldn't pull it in. Where does this ball hit him, Tom? I mean, the ball's right on the money. Almost looks like he might in a face mask. He gets a little bit, gets away with a push off at the back end of this great separation right there. The ball hit him right in the face, Matt. You're not going to throw it any better than that. This is the same guy that's made some huge plays, hit him right in the face mask. Dave, maybe in his defense, he's looking back towards the sun as he yeah. tries to make that play. Yeah, if I'm the quarterback, I'm not buying it. Okay. Thought I'd put it out there. Yeah, Dave Archer, the former quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons, Hall of Famer at Iowa State. Yeah, the Snow Junior College. And as the well. conversation goes like this, Tom. Okay, okay, hey, I'll run the route. You come back here and have Malik Carney hit you in the side of the head if you're letting <laughs> it go. Not a fair trade. That's Lloyd in motion. We got all mm. kinds of things. A lot of moving parts and right a, now. And a big and mistake on third down and short, Tom. It's going to move Duke back. Ball start. Offense number 63. Five yard penalty. That's a third big down. mistake on third and one week. A lot of fun to watch. Dino Babers group take on Notre Dame from Yankee Stadium. 11 of 14 on third down. That's near the 45 yard line. And that is complete. Noah Gray. That should be a first down. And it is. Chains are rolling. 10 yards for Gray. Well, another contested catch by a guy that's just not on your radar. Noah Gray's had a nice year, but how about this throw? Contested catch. Ross draped all over him. Good job of Jones putting in the place where only his guy could catch it. Jones wants to throw again after the fourth catch from Gray. He got hit. The ball came out. Scooped up. It's Fox. Inside the 40. you will mark it at the 39. Dalton made the hit. Fox came up with the football as Jones went down. Yeah, Daniel Jones held this ball a long time. His receivers were disrupted on their paths up the field by some jams down the field. So he held on to it. And Dalton gets home. The big number 97. Just kept fighting up front. See how long Jones holds the ball. Ball out. And then Tamon Fox, who had the block field goal, gets the scoop. And now North Carolina with an opportunity to get the equalizer. Second turnover of the game. And they both belong to North Carolina. Excellent field position. 39 of Duke. The hit and the cover by Fox. Little Razzle Gadget. Groves is going to throw, and it's incomplete. Vargas is number 80. <laughs> North Carolina does such a good job of setting these plays up, but the, the guys throwing the ball just have not been able to get the ball out. And here, here's the tight end wide open right here, just getting the ball somehow. We saw against Syracuse a couple of weeks ago, Tom, Chris Kapilovic made a couple of great calls, and they just could not get the ball to the receiver that was wide open. Second and 10 for Nathan Elliott. This a higher percentage play. Bouncing off the first tackle was Carter, but not the second. Now we've been talking about how they've been blocking Ben Humphreys on these swing throws and eliminating the linebacker from the play. Ben Humphreys had had enough of that. Watch number 34 flash to the right. Blow up the block and the play. Vargas could not get Ben Humphreys blocked that time, and it allowed Duke to rally and force third and long. A loss of seven on the play. Third and 17. They're inside of four minutes to go in the third quarter. 63 points in the first half. Nothing so far in the second half. Two of seven on third down for North Carolina. Good show in zone coverage. Daz Newsom at the bottom of the screen in the slot. From the 45. Brown. Maybe the 40, but that is a good 11 yards short of the stick. Six yards on the play. 
Brandon Hill, number 32. Blackwell is also there, redshirt freshman. Well, that's a heck of a stop by Duke defensively after turning the ball over at the, what, the 39-yard line. North Carolina nets minus one yard in three plays, and are going to have to punt the ball away. That's a heck of a job of stepping up defensively if you do. North Carolina unable to capitalize on a couple of turnovers here in the second half. In fact, they had just 19 points all season off turnovers to 84 from their opposition off the turnovers. We'll get that previews coming up in just a second after this punt by Lent. See if they can keep it in play. Puts a little backspin on it at the seven. Tom Wormy red shot. Yeah, long field ahead of the Blue Devils. There is a flag, 32 yards on the punt. Flag on the play. Seeing a lot of Jeff McGonaghy here in the second half. Yeah, too much of Jeff. Personal foul, legal hands of the face, kicking team number 15. 15 yard penalty, first down. So that one against North Carolina. We please you, Virginia Tech and Pitt with Tommy and Pete. Well, coming up in a little under a half an hour now, Coach, we've got a crucial Coastal Division matchup between Virginia Tech and the Pitt Panthers. I think all eyes will be on the Virginia Tech front seven to see if they can slow the Pitt running game down. Darren Hall, Quadre Olson, averaging 230 yards a game, third in the ACC in rushing. Pitt currently sit at four and one in the ACC, control their own destiny. For now, guys, back to you. Katie, thank you. The strangest of the Coastal means that if Virginia Tech were to win against Pittsburgh and its final two games, which includes the game against Virginia, it would represent the Coastal Division. There are so many possibilities as far as that division is concerned. This is ramming at the 30. Because well, you've got Pittsburgh, Tom, Dave, with just the one loss right now. And I was sitting here before we came on today, and I was drawing up a, a way, and it's not too crazy a way, where five teams could be tied at the top with a five and three mark. And one of those teams being Georgia Tech, who people have left for dead. Hey, Looks hey. like the big fella Powell. Or, I'm sorry, Dalton. Dalton, that's the guy that made the hit earlier in the game, Jalen Dalton. <laughs> to see Jalen Dalton get into that North Carolina sidelines. This is Daniel Jones, an effective <laughs> runner today. Daniel Jones to the 30. Daniel Jones running to the end zone. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown, Duke and Daniel Jones. <laughs> oh, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm going to give the guy credit that deserves credit on this deal. I talked to who does an unbelievable, Art Chase does an amazing job as the SID here at Duke. And he said, you know, the one thing that people doesn't, don't talk about Daniel Jones enough about is his ability to run with the football. Does he get in? I'm just going to give him, I'm going to let him have it on merit. I mean, that was a heck of an effort. It looks like he's down prior to getting in. Looks like maybe the knee's down at the one yard line. And so they're going to have to earn it. They're not going to get it on this play. But Daniel Jones has completely mystified North Carolina with his ability to run the ball. And not only run it, run away from their defenders. I mean, I'm stunned, Tom, in his ability to run away from guys. Six foot five, 230-pound quarterback, and he is running away from people in the open field. It was Trey Morrison who got back there and may have saved a touchdown with the shoestring tackle of Daniel Jones. It appeared on the replay that the knee was down. The runner's knee was down at the two-yard line. The ball in possession. First down at the two. So the, the two-yard line is going to be the mark for Daniel Jones. That close to another TD. It's a classic zone read play. You're going to get the zone read off the motion right here, and then he's going to pull it because he sees a huge crease through the middle. And so you've got to make this play if you're the safety right here. But Jones is, is just completely baffled North Carolina with his speed. They're completely underestimating and, and coming at the wrong angle to take the quarterback away. It looks like we have Quentin Harris. Yeah, Quentin Harris has come in at quarterback. Harris who threw a touchdown pass and win against Miami on a little jump pass play from close yardage about this range. Harris walking into the end zone. Basically untouched. Jones with the long 68-yard run, and Harris finishes it off from two yards out for Duke. Jones came in with 141 yards rushing on the year. 
for the whole season. I mean, he's, uh, he's gone past that and then some today in just three quarters of football. 188 yards on the ground for Daniel Jones. Oh, by the way, he's thrown three touchdown passes today, too. Wareham for the extra point. Uh, it's been a, an unbelievable performance so far today by Daniel Jones, and he's not done. I mean, this game's far from over. It's a 14-point game, but we've still got a minute 42 left in the third quarter. Your local Toyota dealers want to give you tickets to the 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game in Charlotte, North Carolina, along with a pregame field photo. Enter today at the ACC.com slash Toyota tickets. The Clemson Tigers, the three-time defending champs in that ACC title game, the eighth time being contested in Charlotte. Yeah, and we don't know who's going to be there yet. I think a lot of people think Clemson's going to be there. they got to prove that tonight, but who's going to be there from the Coastal? They talked about Daniel Jones. I don't think he's seen his praises enough. This was a broken play where he got out of the pocket and ran for first down. This is designed re zone read play. Gets a first down on that. Then he pulls the ball down and takes off here. Gets another first down. This was the touchdown run right before the end of the half. It went 61 yards where he outran everybody in the secondary. And then, of course, the last play we just saw where he looked like he was setting sail to, to score again and maybe just ran out of gas. 178 yards rushing today, 510 total yards. Newsom on the return. Right around the vicinity of the 20 yard line. They'll mark him at the 22 for Daz Newsom. Daniel Jones, staggering numbers today. Well, and, and Tom, we got, we got a whole quarter of football left. Duke has 590 total yards. Daniel Jones responsible for 510 of those. Three passing touchdowns for Jones. Those were all in the first half. And a rushing TD, as Dave just documented, of 61 yards right before the end of the second quarter. What an afternoon for the young man from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Charlotte Latin High School. See if North Carolina can respond. Michael Carter on the carry. Well, you almost come to the point now, if you're Larry Fedora, is you've got to keep your offense on the field. I mean, it's short of something stupid where you're deep in your own territory and having to go for it on fourth and long you've got to think about your offense being in four down territory virtually the entire field because your, your defense had a tough time limiting what Daniel Jones is going to do Elliott was out as a receiver face on the mask. edge direct snap to Carter no face mask looked like he got his face mask but no call officials were looking at it Let's take a look at this play in the back end see Ben Humphreys calling the defense Trying to get lined up, and then Humphreys is the guy that's going to step in the hole, beat the block of the tight end. Yep, got him around the shoulder pad. Good play by the senior linebacker. And just for good measure, made sure, hey, stay down there. Yeah, the call relayed from co-defensive coordinator Matt Guerreri, who makes the calls on game day, along with Ben Albert, the co-defensive coordinators under David Cutcliffe. They swing it out to Brown. Sharp angle cut, 25-yard line, and up to the 30, but short. And the first down marker, seven yards on the play, and watch the clock go down to 18, 17, 16 seconds to go in the period. Now North Carolina's made a couple plays defensively. They just have not been able to take advantage of it. Certainly the play the last series where North Carolina's defense provided a short field opportunity, and Duke Stockton stopped them. Well, we talked about this as a rivalry game, and Duke is holding serve, and their quarterback is playing off the charts right now. Up for the fourth quarter. We saw nine touchdowns in the first half, just one in the third quarter, and it was a short TD run for Duke. It was Quinton Harris, the backup quarterback, took it in. That's ramming with the fair catch at the 25-yard line. Separation now, 14-point bulge for Duke. Blue Devils have the football and the lead as we start the fourth. Ramming along the edge up near the first down marker. Should be enough beyond the 35-yard line, forced out by Britt. 
12 yards on the play as we go down to Larisha. Well, I'm on the North Carolina side, and head coach Lafredor basically just told his team what he told us on the phone, guys, about not doing too much. Don't press yourself too much. Don't be uptight. Do your job and enjoy the moment. Too much pressure can sometimes result in mistakes, and he doesn't want his guys to do that. See how they respond as that pass is caught. Number 87 is Noah Gray. Yeah, the toughest part, and I, I get the whole don't put too much pressure on yourself. I don't I don't sense that they're doing that. I think that Duke is just executing at such a high level on offense that North Carolina reeling on defense right now. So many close calls for the Tar Heels this season. Losses at Syracuse at home against Virginia. On the road against Virginia. That one is incomplete. Deion Jackson. It's another, it's another outstanding throw. Deion Jackson gets isolated. We talked about this matchup with Ross, who is a who is a essentially a big safety at 215, 220 pounds. He plays kind of listed as a linebacker, but he is a he is a DB. Been been listed as a DB through the years here at North Carolina. But Jackson runs right by and just could not squeeze it on the fade run. 526 total yards for Daniel Jones. That is a school record. That was a pass to Ramming near the 45-yard line. Incomplete as Corey Bell was defending. That's a good play by Bell. Contested throw out there. Made it tough. There's Daniel Jones's yard so far. 526. And now we're, we're nearing historic levels now for, for Duke. We're just outside the top seven all-time record for total yards in a game and they still have a full quarter of play only three players in the history of the league have thrown for 300 and rushed for more than 100 Lamar Jackson did it three times Boyd twice and now Jan Daniel Jones has done it twice that ball is down at the 30 but was it no, touched hit, by North Carolina it hit Patrice Renee in the helmet the defensive back for North Carolina so if Duke's on this it's their ball North Carolina scrambles back on the top of it, but it was a short punt. Renee in the part of the group that's trying to provide a return and blocking the ball, hitting right in the head. Kind of the benefit Duke did, almost got the benefit of not a great kick. All right, the Tar Heels will have the ball when we come back to our first and 10 line brought to you by Dish. Switch the Dish to get every major Division I college football game. Here at Wallace Wade Stadium, North Carolina with the football. That pass incomplete. Anthony Ratliff Williams couldn't pull it in from Nathan Elliott. So we talked about the difference uh, the first half and second half. Certainly for North Carolina reflected there. Four touchdowns really moved the ball extremely well, but they punted four consecutive times here in the second half. And not a good start to this drive, an incompletion to Ratliff Williams. Talking about the close games that they have played this year at Virginia, at Syracuse, lost against Virginia Tech on the final drive, double overtime at the Dome. Certainly much better than their record would indicate at one and seven. This is Jordan Brown. Big collision, far sideline, 33 yard line. Brandon Hill made the play for Duke. And again, next week, NC State at Louisville, just the ninth all time meeting. And Louisville is 4 0 at home against NC State. Coming off its loss against Wake Forest on Thursday, Louisville lost at the Dome last night to the Syracuse Orange, who went undefeated at home this year. Two of nine on third down. Elliott's going to have to do it himself, and he will be well short of the 40-yard line. That was the line to gain for Elliott, and he couldn't get there. Well, let's take a look. We talked about Elliott's not the dynamic runner, and Duke knows that, so they're not really paying attention to him. Take a look at his opportunity. Right here's the opportunity. See the back and the flat right there. That's where he needed to throw the ball. Was not looking that direction. Was looking at inside breaking routes. Took off. And so a fifth punt just here in the second half. Five consecutive punts. And seven total punts for North Carolina and Lent. TJ Ramming is the deep man at his 25. On the sunny side of the field. Ramming at the 18. Trying to curl around. Not enough room. And he goes... Out of bounds. 47 yards on the punt. The return was just two. Now, rivalry football is what we've been talking about all day long. And it's been big hits getting after each other. They see each other all the time and getting after each other all the time, all day long. Big hits, ball out, playing for the victory, though. 
and 28 offensive coordinator Zach Roper has called a masterful game today especially involving number 17 is quarterback Daniel Jones third year as the offensive coordinator for Roper I go to Deion Jackson who gets pulled back across the 15 yard line forward progress to the 18 on the play by Dalton that's a good play by North Carolina up front. You know, talking about Zach Roper, Tom, it was fun talking to him yesterday, and we asked him about Coach Cutcliffe, and he says, Coach Cutcliffe, Coach Cutcliffe is like having an all-22 camera on every play. <laughs> he says, it's unbelievable. He'll, something will happen on the other side of the field. He goes, hey, did you see that happen over there? And you have no idea. 17th year overall as a head coach for David Cutcliffe. Nothing there. It's Carney and a loss of two. Well, nice play by Carney. We talked about how good a player he is and his impact when he gets a chance to play. Suspended for a few games this year, but when he's on the field, he's a difference maker for North Carolina. Of course, third and long here. Just one touchdown here in this second half. Jones has all kinds of time. Spins it down the sideline, and it is incomplete. Ball out there at the 45. Chris Taylor was the receiver for Duke. There is a flag in the offensive backfield. Kind of, uh, the way Duke's kind of hanging around. He's thinking Russell in the Personal pass. foul, hands in the face. Defense, number 12. 15 yard penalty, first down. Come on, Fox, the defensive end. Going to get flagged to extend the drive here. I mean, Chris Taylor's made some big-time plays today. He's also had the ball hit him in the face mask. This one's going to hit him right in the chest and incomplete. He could have some just some monster numbers. He has good numbers as it is, but he's been off the charts and he's been able to catch a couple of passes. North Carolina has 10 penalties for 116 yards today. And that was a backbreaker on Fox, a personal foul. Jackson on the run. J.K. Britt on the tackle, senior from Noonan, Georgia. Well, both these teams play with some tempo. Duke doesn't play quite as quickly as North Carolina does. They're a little bit more situational as how quickly they play, and certainly they'll run some clock now. Need a little bit more clock. Daniel Jones, veteran quarterback, to see how much he's willing to take off the clock before he snaps it. Regardless of the outcome today, the Blue Devils bowl eligible for the sixth time in the last seven years as that one falls incomplete to Ramey, Renee on D. Renee lined up against T.J. Ramming to the inside, just an inside slant route, does a good job of staying in his hip pocket, and when the ball delivered, swats it out there with the right hand. Good positioning for Renee. This is a defensive backfield for North Carolina that's beat up. They're missing about three or four guys in that secondary, including their starting corners that started the year for them. 12 of 16 on third down, miscommunication between passer and receiver, incomplete, and Jones hit the deck. Randy and Renee having a few little, little conversation. Renee's got to get his head around. Looked like Fox was up in the grill of Daniel Jones. Remember, Fox committed the personal foul, but it's going to be fourth down. Uh, protection allows Fox to come clean off the edge. North Carolina trying to bring one more than Duke can pick up in that empty set. And that time Fox was clean and put a shot on Daniel Jones. Just the third punt of the game for Austin Parker. Daz Newsom. He's standing at his 30-yard line. Play Fox at zero. Number 45, five-yard penalty, fourth down. I like how they blame the punter for the delay of game on the punt team because they don't know who else to blame. It's usually one of the personal protectors that's called the snap count. That's this group right here. But they're going to blame the punter. Newsom ran one back against Syracuse. Wants to try here from the 32. Got a little bit of field to work with. Newsom turns the corner at midfield. Can't stay in bounds. Got pushed out, but on the Duke side of the 50. Spilia Johnson made the play. 42 yards on the punt, 19 on the return. The Roses outside Wallace Wade Stadium. Back in 19. Michael Carter has been shut down here in the second half. Anthony Ratliff Williams took the snap and gave it off. Michael Carter. First down and close to the 35 yard line for Michael Carter. Feemster on the tackle for Duke. 
Well, this is the play that led to a touchdown. This is the play where Ratliff Williams kept the ball himself, went around the edge and got some key blocks on the outside. Good block there by Devontae Williams out in front of Michael Carter to get him a first down on the opening play of this drive. And that is the first first down of the half for North Carolina. Took 17 plays to get there. Newsom, not much there. How about an update on Virginia and Liberty? Katie and Tommy in Charlotte. Yeah, let's head to Charlottesville where things are getting interesting, Coach. Here, Frankie Hickson for uh, Liberty with a one-yard touchdown run. Caps a 12-play, 70-yard, 75-yard drive. Then Virginia answers Bryce Perkins to Joe Reed for a 14-yard touchdown pass to put Virginia on the board. And they're tied at seven with five and a half to play in the first quarter, Tom. Thank you, Katie. This is Carl Tucker on the catch. He's pulled down. Four yards for Tucker for North Carolina. It's its last four losses by ten points or less in the last road game of the season for the Tar Heels playing for the Bell here in Durham. It is third down, just two of ten in the game for North Carolina in this yeah, situation. This is, and it's definitely four down territory. So Michael Carter in the backfield with, with Elliott. Gonna be Carter. See, and there's no regard to the quarterback. There's no regard for the quarterback in the run game. They're just turning him loose in this zone read game. Let's take a look at what the, the regard to the quarterback. Now, this is zone read, but watch the edge player out here. Doesn't even doesn't even glance at the quarterback, just crushes down to the inside. This is uh this is something Larry Throws has to do now. He cannot give the ball back to Duke without trying to score here. Nine of 17 on fourth down this season for North Carolina. Fourth and five. Need to get to that 26 yard line. Elliott to the right side, down toward the goal line. It's incomplete to De'Ami Brown, and it's a clean play, no flags. Well, and Tom, it's such a low percentage play to try to throw a fade route. It's third, a fourth and five, and I can't believe you couldn't find a better option to try to hit somebody to get the ball to somebody on the move underneath to get your first down. You know, Daniel Jones, we talked about a record in total yards today. He's been sharp throwing the ball. We talked about him being able to run the football. 525 yards of offense is what he's accounted for. But his ability to shoot the ball in the passing game has really allowed him to be as effective in the running game as he's been. Really been very sharp throwing the ball. 178 yards rushing for Daniel Jones and a touchdown on the ground. Three passing TDs. That went near the 34-yard line. Philly Johnson. Over 85 with the catch. Well, this tells you David Cutcliffe and Zach Roper and their offensive brain trust how important Daniel Jones is to him. Listen, they're trying to run the clock out, and they're in an empty set. There's no backs back here, so no run threat at all. They're going to let Daniel Jones distribute, distribute the football. They try the other side near the 39-yard line. Deion Jackson just short of the first down mark at the 41. Daniel Jones, our Chevy performance of the game, brought to you by your local Chevy dealers, and why not? Yeah, I, don't, I think it's certainly apropos for him. He's been outstanding today. Guess who has the football? Daniel Jones, first down, Duke. Yeah, and what we don't have included in those total yards is how many times he's run for a first down and extended the drive. And I think that's about seven or eight on the day where he's run for first down. So, once again, the ball in Daniel Jones' hands. Again, empty set. You're running the clock out here if you're Duke. But he's going to throw the quick balls to the outside. He's got to be careful of the DB squatting on the route now. He's got the career high in rushing today. That pass deflected. Malik Carney deflected it. A diving attempt by Holcomb, but incomplete. Trying to get the ball out quick. This is the quick game. Turn the edge rusher loose, and boy, Cole Holcomb almost ended up with the ball. Now, so what Daniel Jones has, guard, has got a guard against are these corners squatting on the routes on the outside, meaning not backpedaling out and jumping the quick throws. 618 yards of total offense today for the Duke Blue Devils. Lloyd, patience, 49-yard line. Did a good job on that. You, patience was a great call, Tom. He, waiting for his center, Zach Harmon. 
to help him in the tunnel screen, trying to build him a little kind of little putt return, a little mini putt return, get a guy, a couple of guys out in front of him, screen pass that slot receiver. And what this does, that's just an extension of the run game in David, David Cutcliffe's mind. Is we're going to run clock here, and that's why you see now they're controlling the clock from the sideline. The play coming in a little bit later. Clock already down. Play clock already down to 10 seconds. 361 yards passing for Daniel Jones. Not a career high. Set that at Pittsburgh this season with 396 yards passing. Didn't get the playoff. And see, that's the problem now. If you don't have your quarterback controlling the clock. Timeout. Two. In Durham. Duke has owned it the last two years. Prior to that, North Carolina had it for two years. Blue Devils with the football. Daniel Jones up to 543 yards of total offense. Trying to add to it. Sidesteps one man, then pulled down by Holcomb right near the 50. Crosses over into North Carolina territory. It's safe to say Daniel Jones is going to sleep pretty good tonight. I mean, he has been the guy that they have leaned on to run the ball, to throw the ball. He's taken some big shots to, to get the ball down the field, the guys, with clean rushers in his face. I've seen him play a lot of good games, but this is uh, as good a game as I've seen Daniel Jones play. He's played like an all-ACC performer today. So up short there on third down, so Austin Parker's in to punt. That total, by the way, of 546 yards for Jones in this game. Fifth best in the history of the league. Parker got it away. He hit the turf. Fair catch is made at the 19 by Newsom. No flags on the play. Well, we saw both offenses explode in the first half, but it's just been a tale of two halves for Larry Fedora's team. And unfortunately for Larry, it's kind of been the tail of the tape all year long for his team. The inconsistencies played outstanding in the first half. Failed by seven at the half, but just nothing offensively in the second half. And obviously, give Duke's defense a credit for making a few adjustments, maybe tackling a little bit better. But, well, I feel for Larry because he's an offensive guy, and they've got some talent on it, but they've just been so inconsistent with the quarterback play, taking care of the ball, all those type of things. And it's led to... A down season for Carolina. Three yards for Michael Carter. We talked to David Cutcliffe, uh, Tom, and he talked about this North Carolina team, and he says, wow, he says, the record and all that kind of, everybody's going to talk about that. He says, well, we flipped the tape on, and it wasn't lip service. He says, these guys are talented. And you can see it, the Michael Carters of the world, Anthony Rattler-Williams, Daz Newsom. They've got some players now, but... Just have not been able to put it together this year. Once again, Dukes forced him into a third down situation to try to convert here. Third and four. Near the 30. It's going to be close. Bo Corrales, first down. Yeah, it's a good catch by Corrales. Got it. He's a big receiver, two times, six four. Look where the ball's thrown by Elliott here. Up the ladder a little bit, let the big receiver go up, squeeze it, fall forward for the first down. So good throw by Elliott. Knocked away and nearly picked off Jordan Hayes, a diving play to interrupt the progress of that pass. Looking for Rapid Williams. Yeah, you start to get a feel as a defender, and you kind of sense, okay, slant route. You look at the cover, you look at the formation, and you jump the route. And excellent job of guessing right there. As Hayes almost came up with a big interception. About to cross the four-minute threshold here late in the fourth. Elliott's pass bounces around. Picked off. Josh Blackwell to the end zone for Blackwell. And a touchdown, Duke. It was Newsom who juggled it. Blackwell grabbed it and took it to the end zone for the Blue Devils. He's going to get Newsom the ball on the shallow drag route right here. That's what the that's what coverage gave him. But the ball pops up in the air, and Blackwell with a room service toss up in the air from Newsom. Let's see if the ball ever touches the ground. Yeah, it looked like it touched the ground right there. 
and he never had control of it. I think this is going to come back, Tom. Blackwell in a perfect position, but the ball touches the ground right there. The ball's on the ground, so this is an incomplete pass. If it were to stand, it would be a 34-yard play. Yeah, that's, a, that's an incomplete yeah, pass. As they just showed you. The Once again, they don't even need to go upstairs for this one. Well, I got it, for it would appear that there's enough evidence to overturn the call, which on the field is touchdown in the 34-yard return by Blackwell on that crazy play as Newsom tried to make the catch. But once again, take a look. Yeah, the ball's going to touch the ground. He doesn't have control of it. That's an incomplete pass. Ball pops up in the air. With the expression on Larry Fedora's face, this play happened right in front of him. I could just think what he was thinking. Are you kidding me? It's a microcosm what's happened to him all year long. It is. We documented the fact that they've lost so many close games. We asked David Cutcliffe point blank. North Carolina's one and seven, and he cut us off right there and said they are much, much better than one and seven. Yeah, it, and he's right. The evidence is there. The record isn't, but the evidence is there for North Carolina. Yeah, it wasn't lip service. That's a fine human being right there now. 64 years old from Birmingham, Alabama. He was a student assistant at Alabama under Bear Bryant. So the coaching lineage goes way back for David Cutcliffe. He's done a masterful job here as the head man at Duke in his 11th season. After further review, we have an incomplete pass. The ball is closed line, third down and 10. Please reset the game clock. No need to review 56. it. David, three, five, six, we were talking about David Cutcliffe and his 65 all-time wins. Wallace Wade, for whom the stadium is named, leads the way. Bill Murray with 93. David Cutcliffe with 65. Dave, in the 92 games before he got here, they were 10 and 82. And he's gone 65 and 70. As the 10 coach. wins 10 in the 92. 92 games before that. Unbelievable. And bowl eligible for a sixth time in seven years this season with their 6-3 and three record. At the 40, near the first down marker, it's Daz Newsom. Good side of deep zone, get the ball to Daz. Cutcliffe, I talked to David before the game, and I asked him, man, great day, beautiful facilities. He says, I'll tell you this one thing I didn't tell you yesterday. He says, I look out my window, my office, and he says, I don't tell anybody this, but he says, I get tears in my eyes for what's happened here at Duke since I've been here. With all they've built, the, all the people, he said, all the people that have helped them do this. This is Elliott, midfield. Looks like Newsom again. And that's nine yards as Hayes made the play. And one last, you know, just one last thing about Cut. It, it just, it's, he's one of the greatest people to talk to you can ever talk. He, he'll talk to you, he could talk to you for an hour and not talk football at all. He'll just talk about life and, and things that, that he likes and, and takes care of and all that kind of stuff. But the people, he always gives people all the credit for what's happened here in and yes, there are other people that there's some, there's deserve credit. A.D. White does, has done, has done a, Kevin White's done an amazing job of driving the ship, and, and Cut will be the first guy to point that out. But that guy right there uh, has as much to do with it as anybody here at Duke. Won the pinstripe bowl in 2015 in overtime against Indiana Day at Yankee Stadium. The first bowl win for this program since 1961. As that pass is complete over the middle to Carter, and we're going back to our Charlotte studios. Let's head over to Scott Stadium, where the Cavs get in the end zone again, Coach. Bryce Perkins doing it with his legs. 13-yard touchdown run. Also five for five so far in the game in passing. Cavs looking to bounce back from that loss to Pitt. Guys, for now, back to you. Yeah, that was the part about that Pitt took away was, was the ability for Bryce Perkins to affect the game down in the red zone. And, so good to see him back. And boy, Anthony Ratliff Williams, big timer for North Carolina, made so many plays. Another guy banged up. That's really been the story for both these teams. They're so beat up. Guys just trying to warrior up and go play. Third and three. Miami did not score against this Duke defense in the second half last week. They've shut out North Carolina so far in the second half. But that pass over the middle near the 32-yard line is good for a first down. Seven yards on the play to Carl Tucker. Exclusive tickets to the 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game on sale now. Purchase a four-pack, receive four $5 Bojangles gift cards and four ACC hats. Reserve your four-pack today. Also enter to win a luxury suite for 10 at the ACC.com slash Sweet Life. Down inside the 10-yard line with a jump ball. And the pass is incomplete. 
but just couldn't quite reel it in. Bo Corrales on the fade route or the deep route there. High points the ball, six foot three wide receiver. Goes to the top of the ladder, squeezes it, just can't quite get it. Blackwell is able to get the right hand in there and rip it out. 35-28 was our halftime score. We've had one scoring play in the second half. Daniel Jones had a long run to set up a two-yard run from his backup, Quentin Harris, and that has been the scoring in the second half, as that is Anthony Ratliff-Williams for eight. Good to see him back in the game, Tom. We saw him limp to the sideline, back out there. A lot of pride on both these teams. Talk to Larry Fedora about his team and the circumstances they're in from a record standpoint, but no quitting these guys. They come to practice every day. Brown bounces off the initial contact and tries to bring it to the outside. Could be a first down for North Carolina. Stop at the stick. And again, next Saturday, Raycom Sports Game of the Week. We're going to the River City. Number 14, NC State, takes on Louisville. Coverage begins noon Eastern with the ACC Blitz, powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500 with Katie and Tommy. The Wolfpack and the Cardinals. They have two of the better receiving cores really in the country. NC, uh, Louisville's been a little bit banged up at receiver, but still a good receiver core. We know how good NC State is on the perimeter. That's number 95, Trayvon McSween, favoring that right arm. 141 to go on the clock. Duke trying to win three in a row and maintain possession of the victory bell. Last time they won three in a row in this series, Dave, you have to go back to 1987, 88, and 89. Had another guy coaching here at that time. Yes, they did. Pretty, he's pretty he good. mentioned he's him. He's pretty good. Steve Spurrier. Steve Spurrier. They have not won consecutive home games against North Carolina, Dave, since 1951, 53, and 55. This would be consecutive home victories to go along with their win two years ago in this rivalry. So a lot of history intertwined with the result of this one today as Thomas Jackson has the catch. Well, Carolina trying to hustle now. We're down inside a minute and a half. If they could punch one in the end zone here fairly quickly, they'd have a chance at an onside kick. Elliott looking to the end zone. It is a touchdown for North Carolina as Thomas Jackson pulls it in for the Tar Heels. It's a well-thrown ball by Elliott. Elliott sees that the defender is caught to the inside. Defender going to be caught to the inside. Elliott sees that and throws it outside. See where the ball's placed, that outside shoulder. Excellent throw. No play, no way Leonard Johnson could get there. The, the safety and a good job of squeezing it by Thomas Jackson. First touchdown of the season receiving for Thomas Jackson. And it is the ninth TD pass of the year from Nathan Elliott as they connect from 13 yards out. Right, your favorite play, Tom. Thomas Jackson, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Charlotte Country Day. Making the catch. 13 yards on the play. And the grab from Thomas Jackson. Get ready. So now what happens now is David Cutcliffe gets his special teams together and they start talking about their hands team in North Carolina. Gets ready for a potential onside kick. They're 0 for 2 on the year, but as we said, Larry Fedora's team continues to battle and they put themselves in position with a, a special teams play right here. A chance to tie the football game. How about 16 plays on that North Carolina drive? Took just over four minutes. They went 80 yards, and Jackson made the catch up the pass from Nathan Elliott. By the way, Dave, total yards in the game combined between the teams: 1,121 yards, 42, 35, 115 to go. Well, that's the first drive North Carolina's been able to put together offensively, where they've been able to move the ball. Duke did a good job of limiting them and actually forced them into five consecutive punts prior to that drive. Also the 11th touchdown of our game, second in the second half. This team has one. Jones. Taken by Duke.
Jake Bobo. Well, it's a smart play, Tom. He catches the ball, and you think, oh, keep running with it, that he could be stripped from behind. And that's the way, you know, cuts T. This is a guy that hasn't been on the field other than special teams all day. Makes the play, and you think, okay, I got some, I got a chance to score here, but he realizes, you know what? I'm better off going down right here, securing the ball, and subsequently securing the W. And North Carolina can burn all three timeouts, so. Jake Bobo, the freshman from Belmont, Massachusetts. 546 yards of total offense for Daniel Jones. Fifth in ACC history for a single game. His passing yards of 361. Delay game offense. Number 17, five yard penalty. First down. See, Daniel, that's the one thing I guess I would point at for Daniel is he's not paid attention to the play clock. That's I think that's our second or third delay of game today. That's a that was a bad place for a delay of game, too. That's gonna help North Carolina get the ball back. Just the yard. 30 second timeout, North Carolina. So Duke. Trying to finish this one off against North Carolina. Next up, it is the Clemson Tigers. They haven't played them since 2012, and they lost that year, 56 to 20. They've lost four in a row against the Tigers, and they close it out at home against Wake Forest. Clemson takes on Boston College tonight in a big game in the Atlantic Division. Anthony Ratliff Williams, Dave, that'll tell you the story here for North Carolina and really for the season for the most part. So a couple of home games for the Tar Heels to play Western Carolina out of the Southern Conference and then NC State to wrap up the regular season with another rivalry against the Pack. Yeah, and you hear Larry Fedora talk about it and uh, it's a, another big game on his docket as far as trying to take care of business against the Wolfpack. But uh, North Carolina now, they've got two more timeouts. They can... They potentially will see the ball again here, just have to take care of business defensively. The winner gets the bell. Right now it's on the Duke side of the foot, the football field. It'll be Jackson. Tackled by Patrice Rene and a timeout. Now this will be interesting here from a call play call for Zach Roper. Do you just continue to run the ball in the line here? Or do you give Daniel Jones an opportunity to run with the football? They've had a tough time with him. North Carolina's crowding the line of scrimmage. Daniel Jones, Dave, 14 carries, 185 yards rushing today, career high. Yeah, I would think the conversation in the North Carolina huddle right now is, you know, let's make sure we take care of the zone replay. Don't forget about the quarterback. But Jones has been spectacular from the opening drive. The touchdown to Chris Taylor. Another touchdown to Copenhaver, the tight end, and here was the big run right before the end of the half that staked Duke to a seven-point lead at halftime. And then the run, really, that's led to the one score for Duke. Quentin Harris came in and scored from two yards out, but it was the long run by Daniel Jones that set up the one score for Duke here in the second half. And both teams just one touchdown in the second half after the offensive explosion in the first half. Now that run that set up the Quentin Harris TD from two yards out was 68 yards by Daniel Jones. Also, the rushing TD at the end of the second quarter was 61 yards for Daniel Jones. And he wants to carry here. Not much for Jones. And the timeout taken. It is the last one for North Carolina as Jones ran into Ross and Carney. Now, remember, you've had a field goal blocked. If you're David Cutcliffe, do you kick a field goal to seal the game? Or do you run the ball again and give North Carolina the ball back at about the 25-yard line? Number 97 is Jalen Dalton. Checking out the right knee of Jalen Dalton. Well, this, is, uh, this has been a battle of attrition for all the big fellas. Jalen Dalton been down a couple of times. There he is, big number 97, right in the middle of your screen. Ooh, yeah. Looked like Harris, Christian Harris, the left tackle, fell against that right leg. Or left leg, I'm sorry. That's 310 pounds of Christian Harris on that offensive line for Duke. The victory bell at stake today.
You win it, you ring it. David Cutcliffe cranking it up. They've won four of the last six, two in a row. Will it be enough today? 42-35 with 59 seconds to go for two. Well, now, so let's think through this, Tom. What are you going to do if you're David Cutcliffe? Do you send your field goal unit on the field, or do you keep your offense on the field? Looks like he's going to keep his offense on the field. Remember, they had a field goal blocked in the third quarter. Cut realizes that that might be the only thing that could beat him here. At least he thinks in his mind that might be the quickest way for North Carolina to have some kind of play go the other direction. So he's going to keep his offense on the field here. As you mentioned, Dave, the field goal attempt blocked for Duke to Mon Fox. Block. Now, cut the, or, uh, Daniel Jones has been extremely sharp today throwing the ball. You say, well, why would you throw the ball? Well, the clock's going to stop on the turn of possession anyway. So it opens up the door for Zach Roper to give Daniel Jones an opportunity to throw the ball down the field. You got press coverage on the outside. Jones, up top. Jones has attempted 53 passes on the day. Here's number 54 for that front corner of the end zone. And was that intercepted? Miles Dorn came up with the football. And it is an interception for Miles Dorn. 53 seconds on the clock. But I like the call. You know, the, remember, the clock's going to stop on the change of possession anyway. So take a shot down the field. Looks like that Patrice Rene might have gotten away with holding on to Lloyd there, but a good play by Dorn playing the football all the way. Clearly gets the interception and clearly went through the end zone. And so, do, and so North Carolina's got the ball on the 20, 53 seconds left. So that's the third turnover. They all belong to North Carolina, but they have not scored on the two previous turnovers in this game. Now Duke's going to want the ball tackled. Just tackle the ball inbounds to get the clock to move. Elliott's got to understand that. No timeouts as they go over the middle. This is Daz Newsom fighting for the 40-yard line, and the clock will stop as they set the chains. Blackwell on the tackle, 20 yards on the play. Yeah, you don't want to give up that big a chunk. You don't mind the ball being caught in bounds, but not for 20 yards. They're going to have to tighten up on the interior. Elliott now, this one up near midfield. That is Ratliff Williams, and Blackwell keeps him inbounds. Clock continues to roll. 27, that's 26. The, that's the danger of throwing the ball short of the sticks for Elliott. He's got to push the ball beyond the sticks with the throw. Second down for North Carolina. And just beyond their own 48-yard line. Elliott throws it over the middle. It's complete inside the 40. Stiff arm from Newsom and pulled down. 39-yard line. You got to kill the clock if you're Elliott. You got to kill the clock right here. It's got to be a clock play. Eight seconds. Still took him too long to clock. Wow, it took him four seconds to kill the clock. So now he's got one play. He's got one play now. And Elliott's got enough arm. You're at the 39-yard line to hang this in the end zone. So this will be a jump ball situation. And now if you're North Carolina, you're going to get some big receivers in the game. And for some, Cade Fortin's coming in the game at quarterback, and Elliott's coming out. Cade Fortin with a big arm. They put the quarterback in that they think can get the ball to the end zone. The freshman comes in at quarterback. 24 attempts on the season with six seconds to go for the freshman quarterback. Fortin pressured, got away, lets it fly to the end zone. Incomplete. And the victory bell will stay in Durham as Feimster knocked it to the turf. Duke wins it 42 to 35 over North Carolina. Well, a heck of a performance by Duke, certainly in the second half. Just go up, high point the ball, knock it to the ground, and go get the victory bell. It came down to the final play. But Trayvon McSwain and Duke keeping the bell for the third straight year, 42 to 35. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Join us for the ACC Blitz powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500 next Saturday at noon, followed by number 14 NC State at Louisville. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football, an exclusive production of Recom Sports.